It's time for the championship to get underway. The field making their way out of turn four. Green flag is in the air. The field fans out from the start, but then funnels right back down into turn one and turn two. Still three wide back for position. We've seen a lot of the cars go across the apron on the front straightaway. They have not done it, avoided it. Try not to upset or damage the bottom of the cars. How much will they do that today? All right, there they go right there. Trying that apron, just shortcutting the dog lid. Just trying to make it a shorter route to turn one. It picks up a little dirt on the tires, but once they clean that, the mirror worry is the diffuser damaging that, dragging that off, shortening that up, changes the downforce. The underbody. They don't want to damage any part of that underbody. Kevin Harvick right along with the Ford Performance onboard camera. Harvick right now running in the ninth spot, looking forward to William Byron there in the 24. You can see already how wide this racetrack is. We expect it to only get wider. Look, basically three wide. Everybody trying to find out where their car drives well right now. For a career, the best at Phoenix has always been Harvick. Nine wins as we see Chastain trying to make his way through traffic. And one difficult maneuver, maneuver will have to be to get by the 11 because they have had a history. They have, but Ross Chastain's had a great start of this race. He's already picked up five spots. So moving forward. He's the best on restarts all year long. Picking up more spots than any other driver throughout the year. He'll need that today, every opportunity. Chastain still being raced hard. Michael McDowell in the 34 just behind him that he was able to get by. And now he sees the 20 of Bell just in front as we see the 11 of Denny Hamlin. He went all the way down on the apron. Not only are they worried about how that might damage the car, but it is absolutely rough on the driver transferring on and off of that apron. Marty, what you got on the one car? Ross Chastain Jr. showing why he was the fastest car in practice, trying to continue to gain spots here and get around those Joe Gibbs racing cars. I asked Phil Surgeon, his crew chief, what progress do you want to see early on from 25th? And he said, listen, the first two thirds of this race is all about not making mistakes and just making progress. After the two third mark, that's when we can go race for a championship. You know, Marty, that's a great point. And it's a different rhythm than what these championship guys normally do during the year. You're racing for stage points. You have to push immediately. You got to race all day long to get those stage points. But today, for those four guys, it only matters where you finish. Who can accept that tempo and understand that the goal today is where you are at the end of 312 laps? Worldwide Express giving us this view from on board with Ross Chastain. And we see a lot of cars way up the racetrack already. There was some resin put down last year, earlier this year as well. Done this weekend, but in the Xfinity race, we did see the cars going up the racetrack to use what's still there, finding speed and grip. Eight laps in, and Legato has about a half a second lead over Ryan Blaney, one of the best cars in practice we saw on Friday. Then it's Briscoe, Larson, and Elliott, the top five, and the top two are separated themselves. Two seconds in front of the rest of the field, and still we see those two falling right on that yellow line, trying the bottom of this racetrack all the way around. Not a surprise really early in this race to see teammates Logano and Blaney pacing the field in practice. They had the best race cars. Really, I thought Blaney had the best car, and I think they really helped them set up with Logano. Both of them clearly exceptionally fast right now, but this track's going to change and you're going to have to stay on top of it and make changes all day with it. We just saw the one of Ross Chastain using that high line as he's trying to still get by the 11 of Denny Hamlin, running a little bit higher, but the 18's in front of him, the 11's down below. He can't get by either one. Stuck now clearing dirt. that 11. Yeah, he's in this dirty air right here. All these guys are really trying to go wherever the car in front of, in front of them isn't. As we ride on the Toyota cam of Christopher Bell, looking off the back bumper, his teammate, Last race as teammates with Kyle Busch here down the back straightaway to turn three. See him go in different directions, trying to get clean air underneath the car. And we 
saw those pictures on the hood and all throughout the car on the paint scheme of the 18 of Kyle Busch no longer will be with Joe Gibbs Racing after this race. He moves on to Richard Childress Racing in 2023. Great battle right here. Look how high they're pushing one and two already. And drivers love that because you said it a second ago, Junior, is it gives you a place to go. You rather than just follow the guy in front of you and getting caught up in the wake of their dirty air, you can go run somewhere else in an effort to try to pass them. I think that the higher groove still provides a little bit of speed, but in the next gen car, for that opportunity to be able to downshift for the lower groove, makes that bottom even more competitive. Tough to beat these guys on the top when they can downshift into a, into a different gear to accelerate off the bottom of the corner. Fuel window for Cup Series, I mean, anywhere from 92 to 97 laps. And so they'll be able to complete this first stage without having to worry about fuel. And still, Chastain cannot clear these two Joe Gibbs racing cars. So he has Kozlowski on his outside now. He goes down to the apron through one and two, trying to get by the 18. So you can see what he's doing. He's making the shorter route around the racetrack, but the momentum that the 18 car is able to carry off of the corner is what Ross Ch Chastain has to deal with. He's going to beat him into the corner and through the middle just like that. But now the 18, look at the straightaway speed that that keeping that momentum hat helps. But now Chastain, he's just going to keep doing it. Like, he knows he's faster. If he can just get that one run, then he can clear, he can clear Bush. Right there, he tried to run the top. It did not work for him. Now he's got to migrate back to the bottom. Down on the bottom of the racetrack, everyone chasing after Logano. Now every lead change is a chance to win $100 of Bush Light Beer money. Follow at Bush Beer on Twitter and tweet hashtag Bush Line Leader, hashtag sweepstakes whenever there's a lead change for your chance to win. Chatting with each of the championship four contenders earlier this week, one of the big question marks surrounding the preparation for this race was what the track was going to do in regards to laying down the sticky stuff, the traction compound. Well, the track decided not to reapply, but as we're seeing here, just 16 laps in, some leftover residue is starting to activate, and drivers are starting to use that upper line. chasing that traction compound and seeing the way that that was able to open up different lanes, giving drivers more opportunities to gain track position. So the uncertainty there from Chase's side was more so hopeful that that would come into play this race. And like I said, here, less than 20 laps in, it's definitely starting to be a factor. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Right now, a lot of Joey Logano fans are celebrating that one-second lead he has over Ryan Blaney, Parker. 
Right, Rick, he's led every lap so far, but often we wonder as we go on this Coco onboard and get this great shot looking back at him, we wonder how teammates can work together for the 22 car and his teammate Ryan Blaney. They have very similar setups in those two cars, which allows you to transfer information between the two. Take a listen to the team radio on the 22 recently. Ryan Blaney was at an 05 in the resident one and two. I in the resident. His left side isn't in the dark yet, but it's close. Blaney's been one of the highest. Looking at some of the guys in the back, it looks like they pushed it within a half car length of the wall in the center. And they're talking about how to move around that line for Joe Logano in reference to his teammate there, Ryan Blaney. These two teams working very closely together. When they have those similar setups, it makes that transfer information that much easier, Dave. Chase Elliott has lost one position back to six, and Jeff Burton mentioned the fact that this track will change, and that's probably a good thing. I asked Kurt Chief Alan Gustafson what he liked about this car in practice. He said it turns pretty well, but Chase can manage the car to get repeatable balance lap after lap. Managing the car, working his tools inside there, that's brake bias and things like that. He can hopefully work to with the track as it changes, Marty. Dave, the social media world was buzzing this week with Ross Chastain's video game move at the end of the Martinsville race. Over 100 million views collectively on social media for that clip from the end of the race last week. Ross Chastain got over 1,000 texts, so he did something he's never done in his life. He bought the Wi-Fi on the airplane. He said, I had to make a dent in those texts somehow. He's only returned about 400 of them. But Junior, I got to wonder, if he wins the championship, how many texts would you get then? I'm, I'm guaranteeing it's more than 1,000. No, I don't know, man. That's, that's thousands is a lot. I think the most I ever got for a win was maybe a couple hundred. That's way up there. You're not as popular as Ross. Oh, gosh. Well, Fernando Alonso's tweeting about him. I mean, yeah. you got you got <laughs> worldwide exposure as to what Ross Chastain was able to do a week ago. Blaney has been running a little bit higher line on both ends of the racetrack, and sometimes when you do that, Jeff, it can hurt you. Yeah, well, you got to push the edge. The only way to find out is go up there. But right here, Blaney just up into the wall a little bit. That was a little harder than you'd like to hit the wall. This car is tough, Junior. It's resilient. You can see the marks on the right rear of that car, Dave. That makes me a little bit nervous for them. So far, so good, Jeff, staying on track and still running in second place. He had just reported that the car was tight on entry into one and two, and he was moving up to get a better entry. You guys called it. Sometimes that happens. And he did run faster than Joey. Joey eventually went up there and matched his lap times. So Joey knows their speed up there if he wants to get up there and use that line. The 12, though, has, has brought the car back under control and now running quicker laps again than the leader. There's no real issue right now for Joey. Like, he can go up there. But he's got such a lead and it's so early in the race, like you don't want to make that mistake and damage the car. Now, you are going to have to go up there to learn what your car needs to run there. Because if you've got to go there to win the race, you don't need to wait to the end of the race to go there. You need to learn right now. But do it cautiously this early. I know it's a lesson that he doesn't want to learn, but can Joey Logano learn something from running with lap traffic? Because he knows that at some point in time he might be in the traffic. Yeah, that lap traffic will dictate where he runs on the racetrack, providing him information like, like Jeff talked about. We see the nine car now has gotten back around Truex Jr. And now Chase Elliott seems to be kind of regrouping a little bit, performing a little bit better. He was falling off a little bit. Now he's running down the five or trying to. Yeah, Truex, when this race started, he was driving to the front. He was really fast right when the green flag dropped. I wonder if that's going to cost him later. You know, we've talked about how this track will change, but also cars are different. Some take off fast, some are better on the long runs. Let's see what this 19 car does. And Truex, you know, I, I think a lot of people assume when he mentioned he's going to come back next year that that would be the last year. He's open-ended. He's not really made a decision on retirement. He's just kind of going along. As long as it's fun, he's going to keep coming back. Got a great team around him and a great opportunity to try to get to Victor Lane today. If not today, they're going to be a strong strong team next year. This year hasn't been fun for Martin Shrek's Jr., and that's why he's ready for 2022 to be done. But he is still excited about the possibility of getting back to Victory Lane. He knows he can do that. He knows with that organization, Joe Gibbs Racing, they can continue to succeed and run for a championship. But it was a surprise to all of us when Martin Shrek's Jr. went the entire season without a win. Yeah. Pretty, pretty interesting how this next gen has shuffled the field, challenged a lot of teams, and surprised us with some teams like Trackhouse and so forth. It's made it so competitive. Every team is more competitive each race. Yeah, they really are. I mean, talk about Truex uh, riding along the Xfinity Mobile Cam on Chase Elliott's car. They came so close this year to winning races. And think about Miami a few weeks ago. 
just had a problem on pit road. Yeah. Got, you know, slowed down, misses box, got spun out, came in leading the race, didn't get it done. It just seemed like all year long that was their year. I know he's looking to come back next year and clean that up. Halfway through stage one, and you guys mentioned they'll be able to get to the end of the stage without taking fuel. Be able to go about 90, 95 laps on a tank of fuel today. We think they'll probably split stage two. Now you're saying that because Steve has told you that. Yeah, yeah, I time, my maybe buddy texting Steve. it. Texting I my us. buddy Steve. I had a lot of help. We <laughs> talked to a lot of crew chiefs this morning trying to cover the bases. We'll never be able to do it as well as Steve. He sees all these things coming at him well before we do, but. And he's going, he, I got my phone open right here. He's going to be texting me if I'm saying anything incorrectly or <laughs> need some information out there for the fans. Coca Cola can looking off from Logano's point of view. This one down on the bumper. Take a look at the telemetry brought to you by Progressive as we ride along with Logano. A racetrack where you're going to see shifting. They'll be on the brakes as well. A bit free in and off. And like a half tight in the center. I'm worried about the lift in and off. I'm one to the front. All right, so free in, free off, tight through the middle. Drives in the corner, the back of the car isn't as secure as he wants it to be. It wants to spin out. Then he gets toward the center of the corner, tries to turn the car. The car doesn't change directions, point the way he wants to. And then when he goes back to the throttle, now the rear end's starting to come around. Now that's the guy leading the race. So <laughs> if you're running 20th, you got all those same problems, but it's doing it way worse. Some of the fastest laps being turned by Joey Logano out in front of the field here in Phoenix. Make sure to download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the action with free live scoring. There's in-car cameras as well as a radio broadcast. All you have to do, search NASCAR in your app store to download, and you can start a free trial. Let's get a few more updates on the Champ 4, and we'll start with Dylan Welsh. Well, Christopher Bell runs 13th right now. He's advanced a couple spots up from his 17th starting position, and this is a, an encouraging sign for them. They were not very good in practice and not great in qualifying, a little bit better than they were in practice. But Adam Stevens says at this point, there's no way to really know how good we're going to be until the race gets going. So Christopher's latest feedback is just that he wishes he was turning a little bit better, but he's been picking them off as he comes to them. So good signs right now from the 20 cars. They try to just pick them off, and he moves to 12th, Marty. Dylan, a few laps ago, Ross Chastain had gone from 25th to about 17th and then had an interesting radio transmission. Listen in. Feel free to coach me. Your lap times are looking really good here. That's 47, 55 are amongst the best lap times right now. 
So the championship four driver openly asking both his crew chief, Phil Surgeon, and his spotter, Brandon, Brandon McReynolds, help me here, coach me a little bit. Since then, they gained two more spots. Parker? Well, Marty, for the leader, Joe Logano, he doesn't need to ask that coaching because he has his spotter, Coleman Presley, telling him lap by lap the lanes that the other cars are running. As you see, Blaney has gained on him as he's cut down that lead from almost over a second as they run into traffic here. But it's not just Blaney. They're telling him the lines of Chase Briscoe is running third. Kyle Larson in fourth, lap by lap, updating because Joe Logano is one of those drivers that just wants all of that information, and then he goes out there and applies it lap by lap and is changing his line constantly when he gets that information. Really fascinating to listen right now as they try to hold on to that lead. Yeah, Parker, you're talking about changing your lines. As you catch, catch lap traffic the way we see Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney do, you're learning about your car this whole time. You know, otherwise you wouldn't be driving where that car is. you got to get by people, and you take that opportunity to learn, okay, what did my car drive like in that lane? How did it drive in this lane? And sometimes, Junior, you actually find a faster way around the racetrack working around lap traffic. We see the 12 has closed the gap now. It was a one second advantage that Joey Logano had, but now Ryan Blaney has come within two tenths of a second. So he is trying something different, maybe a little faster long run car than the 22 has. I think that Ryan can be more aggressive. We've already seen him hit the wall down in turns one and two, and he can really, really be more aggressive early in the race. We talked about Joey. He's going to have it dialed back with the lead. He's going to be careful. He knows that. The next championship grid is several positions behind. He's not way up the racetrack in the in the grip or in the resin. He's, he's dialed that off the wall just a little bit, and that's going to cost him some lap time. If he wants to go, he knows he has a little more speed in this car. There's definitely some more in this race car for him. I'll tell you, I want to, this guy right here, Christopher Bell, you and I both, Junior, on Friday, were very concerned about the speed of this car. But right now, he may have the fastest race car on the racetrack. Now, he's got relatively clean air, which is helping him, but he is running Austin Cindric down for 10th place. So a good start of the race for this team. Obviously, this team racing with heavy hearts with the news about Coy Gibbs, tons of you know, feelings and emotions for that team today. But right now, they're being able to put that behind them and use that to help make this team better today. You talk about the clean air. All the cars around him are running the fastest laps on the racetrack. Christopher Bell, Cindric Reddick, Harvick, all the top, top three or four lap times the last time by. So the traffic on the racetrack playing a critical role. The field spread out all the way around this one mile track. Logano now with a four tenth of a second lead. You see Elliott running in the sixth spot trying to chase down Martin Shrex Jr. But Martin Shrex Jr. is almost a second and a half in front of him. Truex got back around him. So Chase struggling with finding out how to get this car more consistent. He's complained about being consistent this entire playoffs. Now he's being hounded by Byron Dave. And they believe they were going to be beyond some of that inconsistency, Junior. We'll see how that works throughout the afternoon. It was interesting when I talked to crew chief Alan Gustafson this morning about 2020 when they won the championship. Remember, they started in the rear of the field after technical violations and pre-race inspection. I asked, did that energize you guys? He said, oh, yeah. We knew we had to come, and we had to come hard. And so I asked him about today. He said, well, we qualified fifth. We're not the best but we're not the worst. He said, I like where we're at. We still have a little bit of work to do, but it's not the same energy as we had in 2020. They hope they can parlay it into the same end of the day. 2020 and a championship. We mentioned this is a team sport. They're only 12 laps, now 11 laps away from pit stops and the teams.
the mind-blowing Ford F-150 Lightning is here. And you could win one during the NASCAR playoffs. Scan the QR code now or you can visit NASCAR.com forward slash Ford playoffs promo to get your chance to win the most innovative F-150 Ford has ever built. Looking down on this one-mile racetrack here in the desert, aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. Logano still out front, eight tenths of a second gap over Blaney, but you see a Look at little that. bit of close call there between Blaney and the seven. Yeah, I saw some contact between them even before this. The seven was hard to get around for Logano, and then Blaney got there, and he gets physical. He don't waste any time. Yeah, you mentioned how long it took uh, Logano to get by the seven of LaJoy. Well, that worked out okay because there was no pressure behind Logano because of a teammate. But as this race wears on, you're not going to be able to be that patient. With some competition behind you, Joey's going to have to find a way to push that issue. Looking at the 14 of Chase Briscoe. He was out after the round of eight, but an impressive season that Briscoe's been able to put together. Just a couple laps left in the stage, but they ran these guys down. There's a duo of Pinsky up front, 14 of Briscoe, Larson. They are caught, they've caught up pretty quick, chopping into that lead. And we, we wonder now if the, the 22 is too conservative or does he need an adjustment to, to change the balance of that car? Still struggling here, trying to get the round, the lap car of Stenhouse. He's gonna go to the top. That'll help out a little bit. That would put the 29th place car, Stenhouse, a lap down. They have just two laps to go here in stage one and then the opportunity for the teams to make some adjustments. Blaney's going to take that high line. He's going to try to get around Stenhouse as well. Now Stenhouse goes a little bit higher, and Blaney looks to the inside. Blaney, another one of those drivers that I think we're all surprised that wasn't able to find victory lane in 2022. A seven-time winner at the Cup Series. One lap to go in stage one. Here's a battle for third. They are all over each other here. Briscoe, the five of Larson. Truex, maybe in the back of the five down in a turn. One here. That was tight. 35 point races have taken place, and points were very important after every stage. But for the championship four, it doesn't mean a thing. No points matter. It's who finishes in front of the other. Joey Logano is going to win stage one. That's the series' most fifth stage win at Phoenix for Logano. Blaney Briscoe. Larson Trucks Jr. top five. Chase Elliott, the second championship four driver, was sixth. Byron Harvick, Reddick, and Sindrick all a part of the top ten. Championship four, fighting for every position on the track. Joey Logano, the championship four driver with by far the most experience here at Phoenix, is your stage one winner. But interestingly enough, when I caught up with Joey earlier this week, he told me that on the preparation side, he doesn't feel like experience really weighs in that much at all. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can't teach experience, right? You got you got to go through it, right? And, and, and that's the only way you, you learn a lot of times is you just have to go through the moment. So for us, you know, it's my fifth time not only just for me, but my whole team's been through this a lot. Almost everyone on the on the team has been here twice at least, um, and and that's a that's a big advantage, right? Uh, and making the championship four, uh, five times gives you a little bit more comfort in knowing how to be ready, right? You can you can fool yourself into being ready. You can fake it till you make it, right? You can do that, or you can actually be ready. And this added couple weeks that we've had um, to prepare on top of the experience of knowing what is most important and what this whole week looks like, their feeling of ready has never been more real. They are slowly making their way forward. 
He mentions having those few extra weeks to prepare the team, locking themselves in in the first race of the round of eight at Las Vegas, the only championship for a driver to have that extra time to prepare heading into this final race. Pit stops are coming up soon. Things are going to shake up here as we get ready to start stage two. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Ford. Built Ford proud and by Credit One Bank, a credit card company. All right, Junior, pit stop's about to take place. As an owner, you sat on the pit box yesterday. How nerve-wracking is this for this first pit stop? Most times, it, you know, it'd be like this every pit stop for these teams this, this race. And as you're sitting down there, you know the weight of the situation, the importance of the championship is on your shoulders. If you make a mistake in any other race, you can rebound, there's always next week, there's always time to recover, but you do not want to make that mistake today. And so you feel that pressure. That guy right there, if you're standing right beside him, you can feel the tense, tense moment as these guys feel these cars. As these cars start coming down pit road, man. It starts building and building and building. And uh, the nervousness on the pit box among the crew members, uh, it's, it's at an all-time high today throughout this day, especially that very final stop. They will be asked to do exactly what they're supposed to do, and they do not want to fail. Trying to do pit stops in under 11 seconds. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is they're going to change four tires and add, you know, potentially 20 gallons of fuel, and they'll have to wait on the fuel. It's that fast, and it's that choreographed. Dylan, here they come. Good progress for Christopher Bell. Went 17th to 11th. Said we were respectable on the long run. His one request from crew chief Adam Stevens, just help me turn a little bit better in the center of the corner. Four tires and fuel, Marty. 25th to 13th for Ross Chastain. Let's see what the number one ranked pit crew can do on pit road for him. He said he was a little too free and hurting the right rear on exit. And it's important to note, Dave, he was the fastest car for several of those laps at the end of the run. Four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fueled for sixth place running Chase Elliott. They said, I'm a little Legend to turn one. If we could do the track bar adjustment we used to do, I'd say put it down. Parker. So the guy on the bottom right of your screen led every lap of that stage, said he was just too free on the brake pedal, but then it got too tight in the center seat of the 22 team. They keep control of this race, and they will win the race off pit road. Logano controls the race, and we see Larson, Briscoe, Byron all gaining some spots there to stay up top. Blaney losing five spots, though. Looking down on Phoenix and such a beautiful facility here as this the championship site for now the third year in a row. 
Want to check in with Rutledge Wood and Rut already an emotional day for Joe Gibbs Racing. But how about the fact that this is a final race for Kyle Busch with that organization? Unbelievable, Rick. You know, it really is the end of an era. Over 200 races in the three top series for Kyle Busch. You think about all those wins since 2008. Two championships, 2015 and 2019. Amazing to see how far they've come together as an organization. But really, one of the most special tributes this weekend is his car still has that M&M's paint scheme on it, but it is filled with thousands of pictures of those Rowdy Nation fans. I know a bittersweet weekend for Kyle on many levels, but amazing to see how many things Toyota, Toyota Racing, and Kyle Busch accomplished together. Wow, what a run. Yeah, you think about what he was able to do with this organization, and you go back to 2015 and a wreck in the Xfinity Series race at Daytona takes him out of the car for 11 races, but then he comes back, qualifies for the playoffs, and wins the championship that year, all with the support of everybody uh, at that Joe Gibbs organization behind him. Let's go to Kyle Petty on the Peacock Pit Box. All right, guys, so far in the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series, yeah. the guy that won the first stage won the second stage and then won the championship. You see that changing? I do see it changing. Ross Woo! Chastain was really quick. It's all about track position, though. You got to go on this restart. If these guys can get track position, they can shake up Joey a little bit. Hold on, guys. I'm on the phone to Vegas. See if there's any live <laughs> brats on Joey Logano. Back to you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Always appreciate you guys keeping us in line. As the field goes two by two again, they choose either the inside or outside line. Logano, he chose the inside line. We've seen that high line get a little bit more speed. The five of Kyle Larson came off pit road second. Yeah, you talk about Ross Chastain, how important pit stops were. He picked up three spots. They've been the best pit crew all year long. He's also the best on restarts. You see, he gets some more right here. Field approaching the Geico restart zone, and we're back underway. Stage two. Look at them fan out four five wide as they come into turn one. Fight for second Briscoe on the inside Kyle Larson on the outside right next to each other. And then three wide for third. Now that all these drivers have had some time to test out the higher groove of the racetrack, it's really going to make these restarts much more interesting. It's a wider racetrack than we had at the very beginning of the race. You see the 20 and the 9 very close together, maybe some contact. Championship four contenders side by side for position. Right now fighting for that sixth spot. Chase Elliott, that 9 car, he actually crossed that yellow line with his left side tires. Sometimes if you do that, the car will get really upset and get away from you. And again, Lugano pulls away. Almost a half a second lead already over Briscoe, and now Larson. Blaney mixing things up as well as he tries to get by the nine, but the nine surging forward in turn three. Blaney had a bad pit stop. He's trying to work himself back up to the front. Hey, Jeff, I went and talked to the crew, and they showed me the tape. The hose got stuck under the front splitter when the, when the tire changer was coming around the front end. He said it should have been a lot worse. It was actually a pretty decent save. Well, that's sometimes, Dave, you, you know, you take a bad situation and you can make it worse or you can minimize the damage, and that's what they did. You're going to make mistakes today. You just cannot make one so big that you can't recover from it. Battle for third right here. Larson has taken second from the 14 in Briscoe. Now Truex is on the outside. Byron behind the... 19 car trying to follow him into turn one as well. Frisco started third on the inside, dropping back a little bit. We saw this on the first start of the race. Marty, what you got on 14? Well, Junior Rick mentioned how they made it to the round of eight for Chase Briscoe and Stuart Haas Racing. And he said, told me earlier this week, it almost made it worse that we were so close to winning the race at Las Vegas. Remember, he was up front, handful of laps left in that race, and a shot to get to the championship four, and he lost the lead and went further back. So he said, listen, I want to go further with this race team. I know we have the capability to make it to the championship four, but Jeff, I think a huge step forward for Chase Briscoe and his development this year, he'll be a championship threat next year. Yeah, I think you'll have a real shot. He struggled so hard on his rookie year, 
He just did not have a good rookie year at all, and then came out this year just swinging and did a really good job. Parker. Well, another team I think you can put in that category as a championship contender in the future and showed a lot of flashes of brilliance this year is that 24 of William Byers. He dives below there. Chase Briscoe and makes that pass. They've had an interesting start to this race for a while there in stage one. The team couldn't hear William. They were trying to get a hold of him. He couldn't respond. Eventually, just towards the end of the stage, they could start to hear him again, so they cleared up those radio shoes. He's moving forward. This team told me before the race they felt like they have a top five car, and they're showing that right now. Saw the 14 car get passed by William Byron right there. Off of turn two, Briscoe had to lift off the gas, lost the lost grip either on the front or the back of the car, immediately out of the gas, giving up that position entirely. Let's take a look. See him right there? He's Something happened, he slipped the back, slipped the front, whatever was gonna happen, he's gonna hit the wall if he didn't slow down the car. Good recovery, but fighting a little balance issue. Briscoe drops back into that fifth position now. And again, Briscoe won here earlier this year. That's the way he got into the playoffs. Dylan. Taking a look at Christopher Bell just behind Chase Briscoe. He's been on the move since this restart up to sixth now. And Adam Stevens, the crew chief, made an adjustment to help their short run to help free Christopher up. And it's paid off here in these opening laps. Keep in mind, too, despite their struggles so far this weekend on pace, I think that these guys still felt really confident about what they were going to have here today just because of the style of track it is here at Phoenix. They won at Loudoun, a flat mile racetrack like this one is. Finished second in Richmond earlier this summer. Another flat sort of bigger bigger short track and knew that they were going to have a similar package here today and so far it's paid off he's moved forward from 17th and now runs inside the top 10. we see this 12 car blaney taking position away from chase elliott concerning for chase he's now dropped back to eighth position the further back into this field you get if your car's not driving good the further back into the field you go the worse your car will drive those problems will get worse and worse in that dirty dirty air we've seen this throughout the playoffs junior this team coming into the playoffs was a lot of people's favorites. Seemed like they had everything rolling, but they just haven't had it. I wouldn't give up on them. This is a very, very dangerous race team. A lot of racing left. Right behind him, the four car, Kevin Harvick, and then the one of Chastain. Both those guys trying to find a way around this nine car as they battle. In the championship four as they run now all four of the contenders inside the top 10. Chastain the furthest back in that 10th spot. All the other playoff drivers have moved forward from their starting positions. Logano obviously still in first place. Chase is the only one losing positions. He lost a few at the start of the race and, and it kind of rebounded somewhat. Now struggling again. Harvick to the bottom here. Trying to take that spot away. Battle for eight. Down the back straight away. What so kind of unique about the playoffs in NASCAR is that you race everybody else too, right? And so it's not just the four championship guys out there. And you know, right now those guys are putting a lot of pressure on Chase Elliott. And also you see the 12 of Blaney's jumped up to the outside of Christopher Bell. Yeah, Blaney after losing spots on pit road. He's gaining them back on the racetrack. A very strong car. We saw that in practice as well. Dave. Rick, interesting bottom of screen there. Kevin Harvick trying to pass Chase Elliott. Harvick's car was pretty good that run. In fact, he told Crucci Brody Childers, I can't really tell you what I think it needs to make me any faster. And you can see he's going forward again. As for Chase, he really contemplated what he wanted before they made some changes on that pit stop. And I don't think they helped him much. He's been very silent on the radio and is losing positions instead of gaining. Elliott's team will have to make some major changes before this race becomes his. This stage is twice as long as stage one, so there will be a pit stop at some point. A lot of crew chiefs, Steve Letarte, our leading crew chief, believes that they will split this stage in half, run about 60 laps and come down pit road. He thinks pit road will open around 122 as far as about there when they come in for green flag pit stops. And again, putting all that pressure on the teams, the drivers trying their hearts out to get every position on the track. Well, hey, race fans, when in Las Vegas, stay where the racers stay at the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, your ultimate pit stop on the Las Vegas Strip. South Point, everything you want all under one roof. And we're seeing the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is around. A little damage to the 77 here. Looks like a toe link 
stroke on the left front of Landon Castle's car, and this is Stenhouse with damage to the nose. Saw Stenhouse get in pretty kill. Saw Stenhouse get lapped early in that first stage. They were racing 28th and 32nd. Landon Castle highlighted here, coming off a of turn two, gets loose, hard into the hard into the wall, and then more contact from yeah. Stenhouse. So damage to the right front steering on the 77. Yeah, just nowhere for Stenhouse to go. He's on the brakes right here, and just once you get on the brakes and you lock the tires up, it won't turn. And if you don't get on the brakes and lock the tires up, you hit him really hard. So it's just a bad situation for Stenhouse to be in. Both cars are going to be on the DVP, the damaged vehicle policy, and that means that they'll have 10 minutes to fix the car. If they go behind the wall at any time to fix the car, they would be out of the race. These cars have been known to be so rigid and so durable uh, after hitting the wall. A lot of times you would have seen years past that the car would be out no matter what. There was nothing that somebody could do, but now they've been able to fix these cars. So this is an interesting place. Uh, for this caution to come out with 100 to go in this stage. We think the fuel window is around 95 where you could might run that long on a full tank of fuel. So this puts a interesting situation for some teams. Some teams could pit here, make a change in their car, get the thing completely full. Others might want to stay out of track with this thinking they're going to get a caution. We just heard right there, come on down, let's put some fuel and tires on it. Yeah, it's been 20 laps that they have run on this set of tires, and so they're going to try to come down, get a set of tires, and see what that'll do for the handling. They got eight stick, sticker sets. That's about 35 laps per set. And we talked to crew chiefs saying that 15 or 20, 15 or more laps, they were likely to come to pit road because there is a lot of fall off here with this tire. So. And we see Joey Logano leading the field now onto pit road, Dylan. For Christopher Bell said the first two to three laps of that run felt amazing, but then I got tight and worse than I was on the first run. So they're going to go more in the direction that they did the first time, try and free him up just a little bit more, four tires and fuel, and another chassis adjustment, Marty. Dylan, to confirm what Dale Jr. was saying a moment ago, they cannot make it to the end of stage two, and once they got past lap 20, you're going to see these cars come down pit road. Chastain said, I'm tighter, but not enough help on throttle on the exit of the corner. That's my biggest problem. They gained him three spots last time, Dave. Let's see what they do this time. Chase Elliott said, I'm actually better entering the corner, but it is tighter. I know I'm slower. So they'll make a chassis adjustment here for Goodyear Tires. Sunoco Fuel Parker. Joe Legato, Paul Wolf said, this puts us in our window, and they will lose the lead to the 43 team. We took two tires. So strategy for the 43 of Eric Jones with a two-tire stop, gaining 13 spots. So that gives control of the race up from Logano. So we'll see how he can do not being the race leader here in Phoenix. We heard Christopher Bell critiquing his race car a bit there before the caution came out, giving that 20 team a chance to bring it down pit road. When I spoke with Christopher, though, earlier on this week, he said making those adjustments throughout the race weekend seems to be one of their strengths this season. I think that is one of our strengths. And, and Adam, I, I go back to Adam because he's the guy that's making the calls on this, and, and he's done a, or a, a an amazing job of uh, – getting us in the ballpark. Even whenever we're not not close to unload, he'll, he'll get us there over the course of the weekend. So um, it's going to be interesting for sure. Christopher didn't quite get the qualifying effort that he mentioned he was hoping for in that interview. The 20 car started 17th, but they were up to 6th when the caution came out. They'll restart 8th.
Monday, it's the last leap before the new year. Don't miss the action-packed fall finale of Quantum Leap, 10, 9 Central on NBC and streaming on Peacock. So with a two-tire stop, it will be Eric Jones and the 43 team that will be up front. And they will be up front with Cole Custer because he stayed on the racetrack as well. But really a lot being made of the 43 team, Petty GMS. We just found out Jimmy Johnson has become a co-owner, I guess you would say, of the organization. Uh, and it will run a limited schedule in 2023. So back into NASCAR. Yeah, some different strategies. The 41 of Cole Custer, they stayed out. They're trying to make something happen, try to get track position, hope for a caution. Everybody else is most likely full of fuel. They're going to have to save about two laps if they're going to make it all the way to the end of the stage. And these teams are going to be watching very closely. Eric Jones with a two-tire stop, how that car handles if he can keep his position. They split out wide. Logano all the way down to the bottom of the racetrack. He's challenging for the lead on the inside. Eric Jones is not done fighting. He's on the right rear corner panel. Logano just got clear of him. Cole Custer on the outside of three wide for third. Ryan Blaney aggressively coming after that third spot. But it's Larson in the five that surges ahead. Cole Custer hanging hard on the outside here on the motor tires. 20 some laps on those tires. Trix dive to the middle. Three, four wide here. Chastain is going to be three wide. No, nope, he's back to two wide. Three wide in front of him. <laughs> Contact with a nine and the 20 back there. Yeah, three wide. And three championship contenders here, Rick. Yep, door to door to door. And you see the one, the nine, and the 20. Oh, and the my 20 gosh. just gets in front that of was the so, nine. So close. I can't believe how close that was. And you saw all the smoke come out of the one car when he dropped down on the flat, on the dog lid of the front straightaway. It drug the back of that car. Teams and drivers are nervous about damage in the car doing that. Now Chastain. Oh, the 20's so loose. Way huge, up the racetrack. Huge save right there. I know he's going to lose a lot of positions here, but he's so thankful that he didn't contact the wall. That was a bad deal. Yeah, he's going to live to fight another day. I mean, that was so close. That almost saw the end of his championship hunt right there. Watch the right, save. Man, cool off one at a time. We're all right. Watch how loose he gets right here. Just a massive save, Junior, and that's, that's just big for that team. Remember, it was this three wide. And that was a contact right there. Just light contact, the one car. As he goes across the apron, you see a drag in that bottom of that undercarriage and that will take a little bit of downforce away as you wear away what's underneath there. Bell all the way back to 13th now. We'll see if he's able to dig out of the hole that he just put himself in. Logano still up front 1.3 seconds. The advantage for Logano over Larson. Chastain the next highest champ four runner in seventh. Elliott is ninth and Bell back there in 13th. Bell's trying to get around this 41 a Cole Custer and can't really turn down the racetrack till he clears that 11 of his teammate. Denny Hamlin finally does that. Going to go to the bottom, clear this 41, and move on, try to regain some of those spots he lost. Settle in, calm down. That was a big moment. Be thankful that you're still out there with no damage. A lot of race left to try to find his way back toward the front. Once again, Larson. Working on now the 43 of Eric Jones. Remember, Eric Jones started up front with that two tire pit strategy. Marty. That is now six for Ross Chastain, Rick. And we've talked about how he has the number one ranked pit crew on pit road. They've gained him already in two spots or two stops, four spots on the day. These spots early on in this run, very key because their strength has been the longer run for Ross Chastain. And proof of that earlier this year, they started way in the back and they got into the game late in the race. Now they're already in the top six. That's got to give Jeff this team a ton of confidence to go from 24. Fifth to six. Yes, it does. And on top of that, you just heard the driver say much better balance. So the pit crew is getting it done. Had the great pit stops like they've done all year. And crew chief, Bill Sturgeon, he's making great changes. So a good start to the race for them. 
getting into a positive rhythm. Again, still a long way to go in this race. They've got a real opportunity to win this championship. You've seen the last pit stop for all the championship four. And it always seems to come down to this final race. We really don't talk about the crews all that much or really rank them or handicap them, but we come into this race and we know how big a role they're gonna play and they will make a difference in that final stop. So far, Ross has had the upper hand all season. We'll see if, when it counts, if that team can step up. Battle for second continuing as Ryan Blaney has really charged back to the front. Such a strong car for that 12. It's been impressive. He lost all that track position on pit road. And, you know, through the restarts, they haven't all went well for him. But, man, has he gotten the pace. I mean, the 22 hasn't been challenged. The only other car that's been close is this one right here, this 12 of Blaney. Blaney had the best 5, 10, 15 lap average in practice the other night. We knew he was the best car. 22 learned a little bit of what they were doing, improved their car. And nobody is running as well as Pinsky today. Blaney goes by the 5 of Kyle Larson, but still a lot riding on that 5 of Larson. You know, it was 1963 when there was a split driver and owner championship. It's been that long since we've really talked about it in the Cup Series. But this year, there is the possibility of a different driver and owner championship. And the reason for that, with Kurt Busch winning a race earlier and then getting out of it, the 45 was still a part of the owner's championship. And that's why it has split up as we enter this final race of the championship, Marty. Quick quiz for you, Rick. Do you think Rick Hendrick has reminded Kyle Larson, hey, you're in the owner's championship. There's a lot of money on the line for Hendrick Motorsports today. Larson won the title here as a driver last year, and he had an interesting comment a, mo a moment ago, Junior. He said, I feel like we're pretty good right now. The Penske cars are just way better. So have you ever been in that situation where you're like, my car's pretty good, but those guys, they're just faster. Yeah, it's difficult because you don't know what to tell your team to, to get better. Uh, if you really like your car and, and everything it's doing, how can how can you get any faster? What do you what do you fix? There's no push, no loose in the car. Just need overall speed and grip. A crew chief doesn't want to hear that. Just give me more grip. That's like you can see them roll their eyes from the pit box when when you tell them <laughs> make my car have more grip. Logano now out to a two and a half second lead. He's led 101 laps here today. NASCAR fans can view every lap of NASCAR Cup Series races from inside the cockpit of any car they choose. It's live in-car camera streams for the entire field. Visit NASCAR.com slash driver. You can download the NASCAR mobile app today. 
back on those drivers. A uh, little bit of action here, Jeff. Yeah, Alex Bowman, first race back after sitting out for five races. He and Austin Dillon going at it, a little bit of contact. That continued on corner exit. Smoke flying, guys racing hard. Alex Bowman getting back into the rhythm, Dave. He's really trying to, Jeff, and one of the reasons he's trying to is because his crew chief, Greg Ives, is crew chiefing his final race for the time as a full-time crew chief on pit road. There is Ives there. He's taken Alex through the transition to the 48th full-time after Jimmy retired, and Greg has been a racer his whole life. What is interesting is that Ives wanted to come off the road to spend more time with family and friends, but as Alex walked through his journey, having crashed at Texas, the concussion-like symptoms and not coming back, he remembered that he'd walked through that with Dale Earnhardt Jr. as well back in 2016 when he was the crew chief on the number 88 car. And Jr., I know you appreciated Greg then, and you know what he's going through with Alex now. They wouldn't have put Alex back in the car if he wasn't ready, but this race is very important for both of them. Alex was ready last week. They had the car ready for a different driver. They moved forward with that, but this is great for Alex to be able to check this box. Also for Greg to have his driver back to finish that final race together. Greg, his tenth, his, his daughter's 10th birthday was this weekend. He was there for her birth, but he's never been there for any of her birthdays. And this is going to change his life and have the opportunity to be able to experience some of those milestones with his family going forward. He's a great guy, always had my back. He's a great leader. And um, it's just awesome to see him be able to change his life, do what he wants to do. And that's what Steve has always talked about, our crew chief, and how much time you spend away from your family in this job. It's a year-around job. It doesn't matter if we call it an off-season. They are constantly working. So Greg's going to take opportunity to be able to spend more time with his family. I spent some time with Chad Canals before the race, and Chad said he was really excited about Greg's next opportunity within the company. I bet these two guys going at it, they have both had really good seasons. Michael McDowell, Justin Haley, just solid years. Well, best year Michael McDowell's ever had. 12 top 10 finishes this season. And watching these guys go at it, the racing in the back half of the field is more intense than in the front. I have I've experienced this. And one of the first things I noticed when I when I got in the booth with you guys was how much they race each other in the back of the field. I mean, it is highly contested positions. They all want to be able to move forward. And they've done some good work this year, both these drivers. That's good results. And this team in particular, I think with A.J. going there full time next year, everything about that's going to get better. We've already seen A.J. have some pretty impressive runs this year in the Collie car. That's going to help this 31 car. And part of the silly season, A.J. Allmendinger making the transition from Xfinity Series to the Cup Series. He'll drive full time here as we see Joey Logano trying to put another car a lap down and Parker. Yes, yeah, so we're kind of seeing lap 116 here. He's led all but three laps, absolutely dominating right here. And I think this really goes back to what we've heard all week from Joe Logano, even back to Championship 4 Media Day when he made it very clear this team had time to prepare and get this car ready. Then they went out and won the pole. So I asked him this morning what the sentiment was like, and he turned to me and said, don't let the others up for air, meaning he feels like the other Championship 3 have already been beat. It's their championship to lose here and right now controlling this race continually. He is also not getting complacent in that car. He has been updating the team lap after lap on the handling as it's changing corner by corner, making sure they have all the updates possible and needed to make changes when they get back down pit road. Nine of Chase Elliott able to get by Eric Jones. And so Elliott trying to move back forward. He's up into the eighth position. Chastain in front of him in sixth. Of course, Logano up front. The furthest back of the champ four in 12th is Christopher Bell. Joey Logano, he is out front by over a second from his teammate Blaney. Out there cruising around, but they still have some work to do to get into this stage. It was interesting. Keep running for now. Keep doing what you've been doing for now. And he's worried about the fuel right there. What do I, when do I need to start doing what I can to save? That's either not shifting the car, trying to lift earlier off of the gas. He's got a really healthy lead, and his teammate is sidekick Blaney back there behind him again. And they can, they can definitely save enough fuel to be able to make it to the end. Let's watch this telemetry. Pay attention to his shifting. There's an upshift. An immediate downshift. So no fuel savings, it appears to me. Watch the RPMs. 
getting pretty hot, pretty high up in the RPM range before he shifts. If he wanted to really be saving fuel, he could shift much sooner. Less RPMs is less fuel burn, but he is not concerned at the moment. Marty, how about Ross Chastain and his fuel situation? Boy, Jeff, that's what just came over the radio just a moment ago. Phil Surgeon said, give me five laps without shifting. So the same exact thing Joey Logano, the message he's getting, they told him not to shift here. Let's see if Chastain does it. And you see he did not downshift into that corner. There will be no shift here down the front straightaway. Doubt that if he shifts in, if he doesn't shift in three and four, he certainly won't shift down here. And to your point, Jeff, when you downshift, you raise the RPMs, you burn more fuel. This is a very minimal way to save fuel. Lifting early, lifting like way early, using less brake, also reduces RPMs, yep. saving fuel. And that is one of the troubles in not shifting, is that now you have to use more brake. Because when you shift, the RPMs go up, and that's engine brake, and that slows the car down in and of itself. Now you start to use more brake. You have to be careful not to overslow the car, because then you have to use more throttle to get it going again. So it's a real delicate balance for a driver and how to save fuel. And Phil Surgeon's watching all this on top of the pit box. He told him right before he said, don't ship for five laps. He said, we're about three laps short on fuel for making it to the end of the stage. So Jeff, not shifting for five laps. Would that buy you those three laps you need at the end of the stage? Well, the thing about today's world, Marty, is that they know. They, they have great tools that they can calculate. How, oh, big loose right there for Chastain. That's one thing that you got to think about, too. Downshifting, the car doesn't drive as well. You just saw Chastain get really loose on corner entry. But they can pretty much tell how much fuel that car is burning and if he is saving enough fuel or not. And one thing this does, it puts everything on pause in terms of battling for the championship. If you're saving fuel, you're not on the offense trying to move forward. So everything about the championship battle sits and waits until this fuel savings is over. Somebody who is definitely advancing and trying to get to the front is Ryan Blaney. We'll see how much pressure he puts on Logano when he gets to him. Logano still up front here at Phoenix. The official app of NASCAR Tracks lets you stay up to date on the latest race and event information from all of your favorite tracks. You can search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free. Give that a try. Want to go through the field? We'll start with Parker. 
And Rick Joe Logano continues to dominate this race. But think about what he might be able to accomplish here with this 22 team in 2022. Remember, this is the start of the next gen era. The first race was at the LA Coliseum earlier this year. Who won it? The 22 car of Joe Logano. If he is able to go out here and win at Phoenix and win the championship, he will dominate it this first year in the next gen car, Dave. Keep in mind, if Ryan Blaney got around his teammate Joey Logano and Blaney won the race and Logano finished ahead of all the other championship drivers, Logano would be the champion. So that could happen today, and Blaney is still winless in 2022. He'd like to get a victory. Marty? Dave Kyle Larson sits in third right now and trying to win two of the final three races of 2022. Remember, he won at Miami a couple of weeks ago. Cliff Daniels, his crew chief, told him a moment ago, you and the 19 right behind you are the best cars on the racetrack. We can get past those two cars in front, Dylan. Nice ride going for Martin Truex Jr. He runs in the fourth spot right now. Not a playoff driver, but remember, they were in the playoffs on points but didn't win and got bumped out. So feel like they certainly belong up here at the front of the field. Biggest struggle for them this year, and it's been a year of struggles. Is just finishing races where they run all afternoon long. So a good start for now, but trying to finish in the top five or better for Truex, Marty. Chase Briscoe trying to sweep the year at Phoenix. Remember, he won here earlier in the year, back in March, having a really good run right now. So the car's a little bit too free, although they get a little bit better the longer they run. Right behind him, Ross Chastain, they asked him to continue not shifting. They do not have not saved enough fuel to make it to the end of the stage. Chastain saying the car just really struggling with rear grip exit on the exit of the corner, Dave. Kevin Harvick runs next. He's in the seventh position. Rodney Childers told me this morning, I'm hoping for some longer runs because that's our strength. Well, Kevin restarted 12th. He's passed five cars. That's a longer run, and he's going forward. As for the night of Chase Elliott, what is his condition? Listen. I felt pretty good in the last two. Three or this run, just help him beat. They turn, but the back feels like it's locked down. Better this run. They waited, bud. Long way to go here. So freer this time, but the back is more in the track, and that is better for this driver, Rick. And Blaney's here. He has caught up to Logano, and this will be the fight for the lead. Again, Blaney looking for a win in 2022. Logano looking for a championship. Logano has been dominant. 131 of the 134 laps, and now 132 have been led by Logano. You do not want to go through a year without winning a race. And Ryan Blaney knows Joey Logano needs the win to win this championship, but he's going to put pressure and try to win this race himself. I don't think he's going to put Joey in a bad situation, but it is it matters. If you, It matters to you and your team to go win. And we've seen this situation develop before when Joey catches lap traffic to 12, almost in the wall off of turn four there. And this is where we are again. Joey's catching the back end of the field. That's going to slow him down as he finds it challenging to get around these slower cars, the 12 will lurk. I don't think that Blaney will push the issue as the 22 is trying to pass lap cars, but he will stay close enough if Joey should slip up, right? Yeah, right. Really get out of the throttle, and that gives the 12 a clean pass. Yeah, Joey Logano has led 133 laps today. That's awesome. He does not want to hear this. He's only won one of the five last races after leading at least 130 laps. So. Yes, running great early, feels good, but it does not accomplish the goal. You gotta continue to make this car better and you gotta continue to execute both team and driver. I'm glad you said that because social media will be all over you for jinxing him for that note. Oh, I get way worse than that. <laughs> well, you mentioned earlier, and I think it's just because it has become so normal that the champion has always won the race, but the champion doesn't have to win the race. The champion just has to finish in front of the other three. So if Blaney does pass Logano, Logano's still in the, the great seat for winning a title here in the Cup Series. He doesn't have to win the race. He just has to finish in front of the other three. For example, right now, he just has to beat that car right there in front of Kevin Harvick, the one of Chastain, way up the racetrack in one and two, chasing an extra grip way down to the bottom in three and four. This guy is moving around. I love it. You got to have a driver that's willing to go searching for speed. Well, we know Chastain will go about anywhere to find some speed. We yep. saw that a week ago. Well, we talked about it. You know, he, he is not afraid yeah. to try things. You see that, how much he's working the wheel. Again, watch his right hand. Let's see what he's still, is he still not shifting? See right there is still no shift. So why does that matter? Well, the car drives completely different. Every driver will tell you 
They love the downshift because it makes the car drive so much better. He's not doing it trying to save fuel. So his car is not going to drive as good as it will when he can start shifting again. He's just trying to save fuel to make sure he can get to the end of this, the end of this stage. This battle right here continues between Eric Jones and Christopher Bell for 10th position. Eric Jones currently, currently holds that position. Dylan, what you got on the 20 car there? Yeah, and he's not thrilled with the balance. Just says it's less grip than we've had all afternoon long this run for Christopher Bell. But keep in mind, something Christopher told me earlier this week, he said, this playoff run for us has been such a roller coaster. We've gone from feeling like we're out and then we're not out so many times within one race that we just have learned that it's not over till it's over. So while he runs 11th right now, not where they want to be, I think there's nobody besides these, this 20 team that knows this race isn't over until it's over. Still a long way to go for them to make up these spots. Well, we talked about how the pit crews will play a role in this and the 20 car, their two stops are the fastest of the four championship guys in the hunt. And so while that was a problem for him at the start of the year. I think that is exactly why he's here today. They made a change with that pit crew. It really turned this team around. He had fast cars, just couldn't get off pit road. Now, he's able to go out there and win races. They've actually turned that whole team around this year. He's a little bit frustrated with his 43 here, trying to get around him. He's gonna need those pit stops to continue to be strong throughout the afternoon. Using the momentum there off turn four. We'll see if he can complete the pass. It looks as though he's going to be able to. Running that higher line now through one and two. And Bell up into the tenth position as he puts Eric Jones a spot back. You remember that big slip he had earlier in this run, and he's you know he's working himself back up through, but it's taking him forever. He gave up four or five spots in a lap, and now all the work he's got to do to get it back. It's just so hard when you give up spots on restarts. Well, the next generation of Wi-Fi is here with supercharged speeds faster than a gig. It's unbeatable internet made to do anything so you can do anything. Xfinity, proud premier partner of NASCAR. NASCAR Cup Series Championship on NBC, and it has been the Joey Logano show up to this point. He has led 145 of the 148 laps. He talked about the 2020 championship and how dominant of a car he had there, but didn't win the title. And he continued to say it has ate at him ever since he was not able to finish that and win that championship a second title. Now he's looking for that second title, and he doesn't want anything to stand in between him and lifting the trophy at the end of this race. Yeah, well, he's led every green flag lap today, so you know he has had the speed, no question. His teammate Blaney been right there with him the whole time. Some teams we're hearing are talking about not being able to make it, even though they were not shifting, asked the driver to save fuel. Some are talking about not being able to make it, and others are showing no concern. Let's listen to Joey Logano and his team. Try a couple laps here with no shifting so we can see what our mileage goes to, please. All right, so there's 
There's the word. So here's the telemetry. And so, oh, he's still shifting. If you're wondering how the teams understand that information, they basically have, you know, it, car data, RPMs and all those things that can predict the fuel mileage with software. So they can watch all the RPM and the information they're getting from the car and the telemetry of the car, and that data will tell them, hey, this is how far you can go. When he starts to change what he's doing inside the car, that fuel mileage will change in live time on the monitor on the, on the pit box. Yeah, it's not a fuel burn meter like you would expect. It's really predictive software measured through RPMs, and Very. You know, teams have gotten really, really smart throughout the years. Marty. Rick, this is a very interesting fork in the road in terms of the championship. They've had a long conversation on the one radio with Ross Chastain. They've decided to back the pace down, continue not to shift. The car's going around them right now, both Cole Custer and Kevin Harvick. They pitted. They have fresh Goodyear tires on, and you see Chase Elliott catching him from behind. Phil Surgeon told Ross Chastain a moment ago, the nine has given up trying to save fuel to make it to the end of the stage. They've started picking up their lap time, so we're seeing different strategies. And there you go, the nine coming to pit road, Dave. Giving up eighth place, Marty. Interesting strategy called by Alan Gustafson. Yes, he told his driver, go ahead and go back to shifting because we are not going to make it. And then he becomes one of the first to play this strategy to get the fresh Goodyear tires on first, to put the Sunoco fuel in first during this stage. 32 to go in it. They'll certainly make it to the end. Now we'll see how this plays out for Chase Elliott. And this is really uh, a terrifying situation for these guys to be laps down to the leader in the middle of this race. If they get a caution right now, it's a big trouble for them, losing a lot of track position. They made the decision, in my eyes, that they didn't have enough speed to win this championship. They came in, pitted early, put tires on to get new tires on, to go as fast as they can to the end of this stage, thinking and hoping some others are going to have to pit or run out. And the pressure being put on the 22 of Logano by teammate Ryan Blaney. So he can save fuel if he wants to stay out front. Two tenths of a second still separating the top two. Parker. They just reminded Joe Logano as the teammate Blaney got closer to the rear bumper. No shifting here. We're still worried about fuel. And the interesting part is back when they pitted on lap 87, the team felt good about them making it to the end. But as you guys noted, it was about 10 laps ago he was asked to stop shifting and reminding him not to shift even if Blaney gets to his rear bumper. 48 of Bowman on pit road for their pit stop. Right now, still the top 23 have stayed on the racetrack. They have not been to pit road. And Joey's lap time's really not that slow. Everybody, you know, running a 29 flat that last time by. That's pretty much what everybody in the top 10's running. Marty. Meanwhile, they've asked Ross Chastain, who sits in seventh, further back behind this battle, to slow down, do not shift. And now they're going to give it up for Ross Chastain as well. I think Phil Surgeon is about to call him to pit road. It was just too much of a risk for these guys. Now they've seen the nine have fresh Goodyear tires on, and those lap times are impressive. Yeah, so we, these guys, see right here, a battle for the lead. Blaney underneath Logano. Logano running the middle of the racetrack, trying to keep the momentum up. But Blaney challenging him on the inside. So see, the 12, he just wraps around the bottom. Car's driving much, much better than Logano, just drives by him. And the Logano trying to look to the oh, inside. He too. And there he shifted. Man. This makes me a little nervous about this car being able to make it all the way to the end as hard as he's racing. Look at that speed the 12 car has off the top and that car on the inside just pitted. That's Cole Custer on new tires. So now let's go back. We just saw the nine car of Chase Elliott pit. You can see him on the telemetry. Here he is right here. Way ahead of him is the leader, Blaney. Right now, that nine car is a second a lap faster. So what he's trying to do is make as much lap time as he can to try to get all the way back around the racetrack with 26 laps to go to unlap himself for Ryan Blaney. One second of a lap faster. That's what he's got to make happen. Well, you buy me right there behind the leader on newer tires will unlap himself shortly. And again, now it's 19th on the lead lap. So 19 cars on the lead lap right now. Daniel Suarez is there. Byron, Kozlowski, McDowell, Haley, Chase Elliott, Busher, 
Ty Dillon, Almond Dinger, Bowman, Custer, all a lap down. Take a look at this. Christopher Bell in the 20. Yeah, Chastain backing up right here. This is in the radio of the 20 car. Some guys are worried about fuel. We should be fine. We get within 15 to go. We might think about saving a little bit. Just keep pressing here. Adam Stevens is so calm and cool on the radio there. So when we get inside of 15, we might start thinking about saving fuel. Parker. Well, Joe Logano's team told them to stop shifting. They were very vague about the situation with fuel, which angered Joey. Take a listen to his radio. A short EMI. Tell me. We were one to two when we started. One to two when we started. That was after about 15 laps of asking him not to shift and to save fuel. He'd asked repeated times over a couple laps to get the info. They finally told him it was one to two laps short, but they also noted his last couple laps in terms of fuel save were right on the mark for them, so he should be in a good position fuel-wise. And he's still shifting. He's only running about a maybe a tenth slower than Blaney. Still running really good lap times. I wonder if they did give him enough information for at least, you know, they gave him the information. They told him multiple times, but apparently Joey not understanding the seriousness of the situation. Has that put them in a difficult situation here late in this stage? Yeah, there are times that the engineers, crew chiefs, they get in their computers and they get in their strategy, and the driver doesn't even know that, that conversation is going on. And then they come to him with some information. Well, it's 20 laps too late. I need to know that much sooner if you want me to save fuel. 21 laps to go in stage two. Can they make it now? That's the question. Blaney, Logano running one and two here in Phoenix. Worth noting here as stage two comes to a close, Chase Elliott is the only championship four driver that has come down pit road to get more fuel. He's made his way back up though when it comes to uh, lapsed traffic. He's in the free pass position, so the next time the caution does come out, he'll be back on the lead lap. We just saw Chase Elliott in the nine unlap himself. He was able to get back by Ryan Blaney and a huge sigh of relief has to be breathed because of what that team was able to do. Well, getting back in the lead lap was huge. You can see him right here, new tires, much faster. Remember, he pitted, he was running in the ninth position. So for this to work out for them, in a perfect world, they would be able to drive back up to at least that position. Now, they may not have had a choice. They were gonna run out of fuel anyway, so they just went ahead and pitted and trying to make up this space, Dave. 
And Jeff that position would be eighth. So right now if you look back he is 20th so he's not there yet. But they got another data point. Listen to how pleased the driver is. Keep going over all these guys. Just stay in front of you every spot we can get. Yeah copy. It's actually driving really good. I don't know why but it is. Awesome. Okay, of course, one of the whys is because of the fresh tires, but remember the balance wasn't exactly there for Elliott earlier, so new data point for Alan Gustafson trying to tune on this race car. It is a new data point, Dave, but you have to be cautious. And Junior, you and I have both dealt with this. When you leave on a green flag pit stop, your car drives completely different than it does under caution. And sometimes the car drives so good right here, you're like, okay, buddy. That's what we need. That's the changes. And then you go on a restart with all the traffic and everything, and the car doesn't drive the same. So they're going to have to still stay work. Great news so far. The car is better. But don't assume it's going to be better on a restart with every other car. I would love to know what that phenomenon is. Every single pit stop under green, my car was looser. Every single pit stop under green, my car was looser than any kind of pit stop under caution throughout my entire career. And so, yes, the screen flag stop will change the balance of your car to a looser condition. And we also got to remember why these guys that are pushing the envelope on fuel, pit road closes when they get within two laps of the end of this stage. So it could be a double issue, a double problem. If you run out of fuel, come down a closed pit road as well to get that service. You get penalized if you come onto the pit road when it is closed. Want to take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap, and that is the car leading up front, Ryan Blaney. 27.229, the fastest lap turned today for Blaney. Out in front, and you see 88 laps run. We talked about the fuel window was somewhere between 90 and 95 laps. Some thought they could stretch it to 97, but we've heard a lot about fuel saving. So that is the big question. Blaney, Logano, the championship four of Bell and Chastain all on this same strategy, trying to get to the end of the stage without going to pit road for fuel. You see Martin Truex sitting there running third. You know, we know he is not in the championship hunt, so he will be a little more aggressive in, in regard to fuel burn. If he runs out today and it doesn't work out for him, he's going to go home knowing he's going to race again next year. Logano is not in that situation. Logano cannot afford to run out here. He cannot let Truex force him into driving his hard car harder than he needs to and burning too much fuel and therefore running out of gas. Dylan. Adam Stevens has told Christopher Bell, we're still good, we're plenty good, but save me just a little bit of insurance fuel. They told him just a few laps ago to stop shifting, but he's not going to catch the car in front of them, which at the time was the four car. He's caught the five of Kyle Larson, who's really saving, but they told him, you're not going to catch the guys in front of you for position, so just get us to the end, Marty. Dylan, 30 laps ago, we rode on board with Ross Chastain, and he stopped shifting. He has not shifted since then. In fact, we saw Christopher Bell go by him and a host of others. He has slowed down intentionally, trying to make the end of the stage. Jeff, I cannot imagine the nerves for Phil Surgeon, all these crew chiefs on top of the pit box. This could be your season, and you're thinking you can make it to the end of the stage here with eight to go. Junior, you don't come into a race thinking, I'm going to win this race by riding around slow. Right, but the situation that presents itself to you, you just have to adapt to it. And you gotta understand what the goal is at the moment. And that's what we see most of these teams doing. Everybody's nervous with seven to go that they're gonna run out of gas. The last two laps on your field, that's what we need. He's getting that great information from his spotter, Coleman Presley. And so he can trust that. He believes everything Coleman tells him. And he'll do exactly what he needs to do. He understands the last couple of laps are exactly the adjustment needed to save the fuel. And we have to have it the rest of the way, even if the 19 passes us. More what you've been doing, we have to have, even if the 19 passes us. More great information. He doesn't know that they're okay with the 19 going by. They need to let him know, hey man, allow him to pass if that's what you have to do. We'll give up that position gladly. Save as much as you can here the last five, not worried about the 19 if he hits you. Five to go. Same great cool. information. Because when pit road closes with two laps to go, again, it's not going to reopen until the field all gets back in line in the position they're supposed to be. So that could be another maybe one or two laps under caution that they've got to be able to keep that pace. They can't stop or run out of fuel even while they're under caution. That's all probably you can save. That's probably why the 20 car off. crew chief was asking its driver to give them a little bit of insurance here. <laughs> All you can save. Yeah. Man, 
I really wanted that a while ago. <laughs> I don't put me in this position. There goes there goes her knot down there on pit road right now. And this is a gamble, just holding on to some track position. Logano still controlling the championship as he's in front of Bell, Chastain, and Elliott. But it's Blaney right now who is in control of this race. Out in front by 2.2 seconds with just three laps to go until the end of the stage. Marty. Rick, here's one thing to consider. They just told Ross Chastain on the radio, it's one thing to make it to the end of the stage, but Jeff, you got to make it back to pit road, right? There'll be some laps between the end of the stage and that, and that's what they're working on right now with the one. And that is a great point, Marty, because when they throw the caution, they're not going to immediately come down pit road. They're going to ride around a few laps. Yes, you can save a ton of fuel. You can get the car shut off, do all those types of things, but it still takes fuel to get it back around the racetrack. And now with two laps to go, pit road is closed. So they are not going to be able to come to pit road if they have a problem. And the car sputters. Logano holding on to second. Blaney out front by three seconds as we come to the end of stage two. Coming up on one lap to go right there. One to go for Blaney as he crosses the stripe. Amendinger just in that 16 car. Maybe he just got oh, the 12 almost into the wall. Maybe out of fuel. The 12 of Blaney wiggling hard. Yeah. He's going again. Yeah, I think he's out. I think he's out. He had some kind of problem. Yep. I do believe he's out. So now. Very difficult. He's going to end up winning the stage. He crosses the stripe and wins the stage, but does he have enough fuel to maintain pace? And what about his teammate, Logano? Yeah, you can't cycle the engine. What if it won't refire? I mean, that's kind of a, a tough situation to Not be bad. in. I got four rounds of front brake to it. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's talking about front brake. Might have been an issue there. So Blaney wins the stage. Logano in front of Bell, Chastain, and Elliott. Pit stops coming up here at Phoenix. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Credit One Bank, a credit card company, and by Novartis. Two stages in the books. One stage remains in the championship for the 2022 season. The 12 still running, so not a fuel issue for the 12, but maybe a handling issue that they'll have to look at when they come to pit road this time. These are going to be a bit, little, little bit longer stops because they're going to have to fill these tanks full of gas because they have run them almost completely dry. Yeah, update on Chase Elliott. Remember, he pitted running from eighth. He got all the way back up to 12th. Dylan. Too loose was the report for Christopher Bell, and it didn't get any better on that run. They'll make another swing at it here. Four tires and two full cans. And Adam Stevens said, wait on me. We've got to get this thing full of fuel, Marty. Same for Ross Chastain. You could feel the palpable sense of relief, though, when they made it to the end of the stage, and he makes it to the pit stall as well. Fired off. 
off really good. He said just no right rear grip at the end of the run. And they too waiting on the fuel, Dave. No waiting for Chase Elliott because they stopped in that stage. He will need less Sunoco fuel. That should pick him up spots on pit road, Parker. Now the guys are starting to chatter the front tires. They're late in the run, but did a masterful job holding off Martin Truex Jr. He will wait on fuel. See Ryan Blaney will win the race on pit road. Coming off pit road. The furthest back of the championship four is going to be Christopher Bell. Logano still holding serve. by Joey Logano out in front of the field. Joey Logano is going to win stage one. Elliott's team will have to make some major changes. Three wide. And Three championship contenders here. Yep, door to door to door. He becomes one of the first to play this strategy to get the fresh Goodyear tires on. A championship on the line. Ryan Blaney was able to go out there and win stage two of the championship four. Logano still in front of the other three, although he did lose a couple spots on pit road to Briscoe, Harvick, and Byron, but he's still in front of Chase Elliott, who's running in the sixth spot. Chastain is ninth, and Bell came out 11th after those pit stops. And it's a good time to check in with Rutledge Wood, and for that, we will go to dinner with a view 150 feet above the racetrack and waving right at us there's rutledge wood oh rick this is amazing dinner in the sky like you said we are suspended from a 300 ton crane and this whole operation that came down from dinner in the sky canada is here hold on i've got my charcuterie plate let me get ready boys i have got everything i need up here to enjoy a first class race and i can tell you the track view is insane that bobble that Ryan Blaney had right over there in turn two. I was watching, he probably heard me scream. It was so crazy to see, but unbelievable. The best view I've ever seen here at Phoenix International Raceway, and it is heating up, guys. Wish you could be up here with me. Rutledge, please don't spin around in that chair again like that. My stomach's up a little bit queasy just watching what you're doing up there. Leading the field again with some unique views is the Coca-Cola pace car cam looking back as he comes to pit road. Okay, all the championship contenders just had a pit stop. Joey Logano lost three spots. The big winner, Chase Elliott in that nine car, he gained six. Ross Chastain gained two. Christopher Bell, he lost five. Christopher Bell has a track position he's got to go earn back. This is it, the final stage. 120 laps to go in the season. 
the field approaching. The Geico restart zone up front. Blaney and Briscoe, Harvick, Byron, Logano, the top of the championship four. And right away, Logano goes all the way down. He'll challenge for third. Right behind the 41 of Custer. Or so, uh, four of Harvick, excuse me. Really going to get to see what this 22 car is made of. He's been out front, had it easy all day long, leading every lap, now in traffic. Good battle right here with Chase Elliott and Joey's Oh, we got to spin. The eight cars around here off of turn four. 34 involved as well. Michael McDowell. As you mentioned, Tyler Reddick in the eight. Spinning in turn four. Don't look like any contact for, for Tyler. Just some flat tires. So very quick there as far as the restart and right back to caution. Broke something or been something. Want to be on stop, AJ. Tyler Reddick. Getting Michael McDowell involved in this one. Only two cars involved, but it was a four wide situation getting into turn three, and that is not going to work out. We'll re rack him. Be back for the restart here in just a moment. Tonight, it's Sunday Night Football on NBC and Peacock. Pair of division leaders are going to battle it out as Derrick Henry and the Titans are going to face Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Coverage beginning with Football Night in America. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern. 117 laps to go from Phoenix. And pit road open. But again, just about two laps since they were just on pit road. Won't expect anybody on there except the two guys that were involved in the incident. Blaney and Briscoe are going to be choosing which line they want to take. We'll reset that and be right back for the restart. Caution's out here on lap 196. Let's take a look and check in with our rookies here because this is the season finale race. They will no longer be rookies after today's competition. You'll notice the two of Austin Sindrick in the top 10 right now, running in the ninth position. Austin Sindrick is the rookie of the year. He finished the season with one win. We all remember that Daytona 500 win to start out the year. 
one pole, five top fives, and nine top tens. You know, funny enough, though, I caught up with all three of the rookies earlier on this week, and they were laughing, reflecting about their rookie year. They said they have learned way more than they even anticipated, and the biggest thing they've learned is their place in the field. They joked with me saying they're just jaded old cup drivers now, but they very much know where they land when it comes to this big-time competition. They also noted that they're looking forward to not being rookies anymore, because that yellow stripe on the bumper is definitely a target on the racetrack. Don't miss your chance to win the fully redesigned 2023 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. Scan the QR code or visit NASCAR.com forward slash Toyota Playoffs to start your entry now and be ready for any adventure. Championship four as they run. It is fifth for Elliott, sixth for Logano, eighth for Chastain, and twelfth right now for Christopher Bell. Dylan. And Rick, earlier this week, I had a conversation with Adam Stevens about what makes Christopher Bell so good? What's allowed him to win twice with everything on the line? He said his focus, his determination, and his will to win. A lot think they have it, but the ones that really do will show it. They're going to have another, going to need another performance like that today from their driver if they're going to have a shot at this championship, Marty. Dylan, we rode on board with Ross Chastain when he was not shifting. Phil Surgeon reminded him, you can now shift. That should make the handling much better, Dave. Chase Elliott radioed his crew that his brake pedal feels odd. Let's keep an eye on that, Parker. Dale, you asked that the 22 car will now find out what their car is made of. While on restarts, he said it fires off great. This last one in dirty air, he said it's really tight. We'll see what he makes here from a fifth position. Restart. Blaney on the inside and Briscoe on the outside of row one. Then Byron Harvick, Elliott Logano. In that third row made up the two championship four contenders. Whoa, oh, the nine! The nine into the wall on the inside, just brushing it. And the caution comes back out. Look at that steering wheel, Jeff. That steering wheel's not straight. He's got some suspension issues. He made big contact yep. with the wall. Yep. Oh, he just said, yep, when he was asked big damage. And you look at that race car, and it doesn't look like it has a scratch on it right now. You see the right front. Right front has damage. See the steering wheel. If you look at the steering like wheel, it's steered to the right just a yeah, little bit. So he's got destroy, some suspension man. issues. And here's how it happens. He tries to cut across the racetrack, but he has the one of Chastain right there. And Chastain turns him into the inside wall. Chastain gave him no brakes there. Chastain is underneath him right here, and the nine comes across his nose, and Chastain holds his ground. And watch right here. Watch him make contact. Both right side tires into the wall. Chastain had a choice. He could have lifted. He could have went even further to the left. Said he wasn't going to do that. Really just held the wheel straight. Said, if you want to spin yourself across the nose of my car, it's not my fault. So that's the way he'll view this. Chase will probably be aggravated that he didn't cut him a break. And you heard it on the radio. He wrecked us. Yep. Watch this run right here. Chastain gets a great launch. Gets to the start finish line. As soon as he gets there, he turns to go underneath him. And Chase Elliott starts turning as well. Hang on. One I just feel up. like Ross got a great run right there. Starts getting forward momentum right here. Seems to the left for a quarter panel. And Chase turns down on him. I, I, if I'm Ross Chastain, I'm not lifting there either. I mean, I'm underneath him. I got forward momentum. That's my spot. Let's listen to the nine. I mean, did I do something wrong there or, or what? No, but I, I, I don't know what to tell you. These guys race that way. It's the way they race all the time. So we just got to treat them the same way. Let's try to get this thing fixed. So come on, to us. And you're seeing one of the crew members. Looks like he's saying bent. 
So he is talking to crew chief. They're going to put a plan together. They are on the damage vehicle policy. The first championship for really in a bad position now for Chase Elliott. The nine car of Chase Elliott currently on the damage vehicle clock. He's got five minutes to hopefully get that race car back out on the track. All four of those championship drivers, in fact, all the drivers in the field, anticipate restarts here at Phoenix being pretty aggressive. And when I chatted with Chase earlier in the week, I asked him where his confidence level was in making those aggressive moves. And he told me, you know, every move is circumstantial. It's all going to depend on what's going on around me, at what point we're at in the race, and how fast my race car is. But he did note that one factor that will play in whether he's willing to be aggressive is who is around him and how they've raced him. He said, I do remember how guys have raced me earlier in the season, and I do remember how they've raced me earlier in the race. It'll be interesting to see if Chase keeps an eye on Ross, knowing that Ross didn't give him any room there. But should Ross have? He doesn't seem to think you did. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on Chase there because he may have made an enemy in the field in Ross Chastain here in the latter half of this race. Unbelievable job by the nine pit crew. They got him back out. He's only one lap down. And Junior, they were using some old equipment to do some tough work. NASCAR's made a rule where they can't fix upper and lower control arms. Change, they can't change them. They've been changing them. They made a rule to stop that. They brought out a port of power, basically just to hydraulically fix whatever was bent. If it was a tow link, they would have replaced it. They bring a port of power out, which is about a 100-year-old tool. I've used one on my street stock car many, many times. And now look at the steering wheel. We talked about it before the commercial break. The steering was off to the right. Now it is back straight again. Incredible. I'm so impressed with their ability to get this car to where he'll be able to drive it. And so Junior, remember their goal right now with 109 laps to go is they got to go meet minimum speed, right? Once they meet minimum speed, then they can come down here and spend time on pit road to fix it 100% right. Blaney Briscoe side by side again. Back to racing here with just 108 laps to go. Now the whole field's driving across that apron. Game on now. So Elliott a lap down, running in the 30th position. Logano is fifth, Bell sixth, Chastain seventh. And yeah, look at Logano. He's worked himself all the way up to third. Chastain just in front of Bell, and they're three wide back here. Logano, it has been his race. He's dominated 156 laps up front, and once again, he's fighting these championship four. He is up to third. The nine of Chase Elliott, again running in the 30th position, a lap down, but let's see how he sounds on the radio. Hey, so it's still messed up. Like, when I turned off in the corner right there, it's just yawing a lot, so I, I know you're working on it. But. Dave. 
And guys, he was told that if he needs to run because of that situation he just described, if he needs clean racetrack, he just needs to give him a 31 second lap. That will keep him from being lapped. So that's the idea right now. And I confirmed with the crew that we didn't see any parts flying out of there. And yes, indeed, they just bent things back into place as best they could. No parts replaced. Marty. Hey, the only words from Ross Chastain, who's back there in the fifth position, is the nine hurt. That's all he asked. That's all he said about the contact. But Jeff, you've got to know that Ross Chastain, who beat himself up for much of the summer for contact on the racetrack, has got to be thinking about what happened to Chase Elliott. How does he, as a driver, put that behind him and now try and go win a championship with 105 to go? Well, Ross has been under a great deal of scrutiny with how aggressive he's been this year. He's caused some incidences, and a lot of drivers have been extremely upset with him. But in that case, I don't know what Ross Chastain did wrong. He's trying to advance his position. He got a run, and the guy turned down in front of him. That's racing. Those things are going to happen. So Ross needs to put it behind him. There's a championship to go win. He's two spots behind Joey Logano. One spot behind Joey Logano. Just focus on what's in the, in the windshield, not what's in that rearview mirror. Dylan. Guys, bad news for Christopher Bell. He just came on the radio and said, I'm blowing up. The team told him to cycle the power. Sometimes that causes something that may sound or feel like an engine blowing up. But Christopher Bell seemed pretty adamant. They've got a problem under the hood of that 20 car. Let's listen. Let's listen to the engine as we ride along. I do not. He's still in eighth place. I don't see any signs of anything. Looks good from here. Nice lap, time's, lap time's just a little bit off of the cars in front of him, but on par with everybody else yeah, around him. Yeah, it looks fine. I mean, down the straight, he's seems to me to be running okay. And remember, they have to finish in front of the other three. So right now, Chase Elliott's not out of it. Christopher Bell not out of it. There's a lot of racing still to go. We have no idea what could happen with these championship four right up until the final lap. Yeah, Chase, Chase is out of it in terms of competitiveness, performance. He will not be able to match their lap times and be able to go up there and drive his car to the front. Now, something drastic would need to happen to the other three to put him back into the fight. But this nine car is out there running 2830s. Leaders are running 2740s. I know he's in traffic, but that car is still hurt. It's still not perfect. They will not be able to get it exactly the way they want it to today. He's off the, one. He's off the clock, by the way, so they don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, he met minimum speed, so now they can take as much time as they need to. What they need is a series of cautions, right, to be able to come in and work on this car and get it fixed 100% right. He's going to have to have a lot of breaks if he wins this championship today. Running 30th, again, a lap down. He's the last of the lap down cars. Blaney still up front, has a 1.2 second lead over Briscoe. Logano running in that third spot. Chastain in fifth. Yeah. Kevin Harvick's going to go around for that position. Harvick is due with a top 10 finish to set a new record yep. of most top 10 finishes at one racetrack in a row consecutively. He's tied with my dad. And Richard Petty. Richard Petty, and for, <laughs> yeah, for 18 top tens in a row. And Jimmy Johnson's right there on that list, too. So you've got seven-time champions that are on the same list. Uh, he could break that record and make it 19 if he does it today. And yeah, William Byron's putting all kinds of pressure on Joey Logano. Been underneath him multiple times, has not been able to clear him. William's a little bit quicker than Joey. Finally seeing a crack in the, in the armor here. And, you know, where the 22 car was just driving away, leading this race comfortably faster than everyone else. Now being challenged, not for the lead, this is for third position. And the, and the one car is right there in the, you know, in this camera shot. About a three quarters of a straightaway away is the one car. So we still got a healthy battle for this championship. Parker. Yeah, and Dale, I think the reason for the 22 struggling here is he's been in traffic is just simply he's been getting tight through the center of the corners. That's been a complaint throughout the day, but as we know, you start to get further back and you get more in dirty air, that just gets worse. And that has been the case for the 22 car. They just cannot get it to turn through the center as he falls back in the dirty air. It's only getting worse, Marty. Parker, there'll be at least one more stop for all the championship four drivers. Talked to Phil Surgeon, the crew chief for Ross Chastain, and he said what impressed him with uh, William Byron and also 
also Chase Elliott earlier in stage two when they put on tires they roared through the field so Jeff he told me I'm thinking of sliding that last pit stop a little bit earlier getting on those fresh Goodyear tires earlier than I originally thought this morning I think that could be an advantage you agree with that well it depends on the situation that you're in Marty if you've got to find a way to gain an advantage if you cannot match the speed of Joey Logano then you have to be willing to do something different. And one of the things in the playbook is to come on pit road a little bit sooner, put new tires on that car sooner so you're faster sooner, and then try to go run them down. That's something you can put in the playbook and give it a try, you, and then you hopefully get the cautions to lay the way you want it to, and then take advantage of the pit crew. They have a great pit crew. Use those guys to your advantage. So it's Logano leading the championship four, but running in the third spot right now. Blaney's up front. Such a gorgeous sight and venue for the championship here in Avondale, Arizona. Aerial coverage brought to you by Geico as we look down on this mile track. Out front, it's Blaney. He has a 1.1 second lead over Chase Briscoe right now. And Logano is running in the third spot, but he's definitely ahead right now of the other three, Chastain and Bell. And of course, Elliott, a lap down, running in the 30th position after the crash just a few laps ago. Want to take a look at the Toyota driver update and dial in on the 18, Parker. Ramsey, check in with Kyle Busch for that Toyota driver update. You know, making his last start in this number 18 M&M Toyota Camry for Joe Gibbs Racing. And it's a day we've seen often out of the two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion Kyle Busch. They started back in 20th and have slowly but surely and methodically worked on that 18 car, gotten it better and better, and now running in the seventh position, racing there with his teammate Chris Rebell, who's trying to go for this championship, actually giving him that room to the outside off of turn two. But Kyle Busch, this 18 team, consistently the game better. They were a little off this start, but now the car's really coming to them here as they're running the top 10. Kyle Busch has an eight spot, and you see Kyle Busch with Joe Gibbs Racing, 56 wins with that one organization. Again, we'll be moving on to Richard Childress Racing in 2023. 
taking both his championships along with him. As we look back from Christopher Bell. We watch the top right of your screen, Chase Elliott, due to go two laps down here shortly as Blaney is catching him. He continues to struggle. His lap times now are down to 28.8s. So leaders running 28.2s. Hey, what you got on these nine car? Some very measured activity down here on pit road as this radio message was relayed to Chase. I know it's there. We'll just try to do the best you can. Hopefully we'll get the caution we'll work on it. I think we know we can do to make it a little bit better. Yeah, I just... We'll see that right rear toe is now. We'll try to work on it some more. So right now, just tools on the pit wall. No parts and pieces really have come over yet, but it sounds like Ellen Gustafson has an idea how to make it a little bit better. Here's a problem. I just looked up at my scoring monitor. 83 laps to go. This race is going by too fast for Chase Elliott. Yeah, the issue that he got into as he goes another lap down, we just see Blaney go past him. The issue he's in now is the car just won't do what he wants to do. He can't keep up pace. And so at two laps down, it looks like the championship is out of grasp of Chase Elliott now. Well, they did a masterful job of getting the car back on the racetrack to be able to have enough pace. They just needed a caution. Like they needed a caution to happen so they could come down and work on the car. Now they've gone two laps down. And remember, there's no assurances that they can get a repair done to the car and not lose another lap, under even under caution. So this team right now, they are struggling going to have to have a ton of breaks. Great little battle right here for fourth place. Harvick a little faster than William Byron trying to take this position. Harvick with the announcement that coming back next year with this team. Both these guys trying to go far in the playoffs, but going to try to finish the year strong here with some top five, top ten finishes. And battle's a unique one because it's right behind this 22 of Joe Logano. I think if the four gets clear, he has the pace to catch Joey. Jumping on both that trying to get on the outside here. Yeah, yes. he's going to do yep. it. Yep. A little wiggle there by William Byron, allowing Harvick to get to his outside and complete the pass. You know, thinking about Kevin Harvick in next year, I think one of the best things for Kevin Harvick, and this is going to kind of sound silly, is how well the 14 of Briscoe is running. Yep. Because really, Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childress, they've carried Stuart Haas racing over the years. Now they've got somebody out there that has speed and somebody that can bring some information to that team. So although you always want to be the best driver and the best team at your team, you also need some help. And I think these guys right here with this group, they're going to be able to push that four car and make both of those cars run better. I know it's not going to help Harvick right now, but Ford looking very strong in this Phoenix Championship race. Top four, Blaney, Briscoe, Logano, and Harvick all driving the blue ovals. Marty? How about this run for Chase Briscoe? Just continues to get better the longer this race goes. A little bit too free. That's his biggest complaint, but they keep telling him, you can go catch that 12 car right in front of you. Meanwhile, for Ross Chastain, they are telling him, you are faster than the 22 right now. So, Jeff, I guess my biggest question is he's eventually going to have to lap the nine car. We'll watch that right in front of him. You see you right there, Chase Elliott. Does Chase race him clean here? What do you do if you're Phil Surgeon? Do you make a jump here, maybe early to pit road like we talked about, trying to get those Goodyear tires on quicker to gain a little track position on the 22? All right. Keep a eye on the nine there. there. Yeah, you see you hear right there the message, keep, the, keep an eye on the nine car. You don't, we don't know if Chase is mad or upset at you. And we know that Ross is hard to wreck. Denny Hamlin told us that all year long, man. I've tried to get him back, and I just haven't been able to. What will Chase do right here? He's in a position. Might not have enough speed to do anything. Oh, he, you know what? He could have. I think he could have drove in there and ran in the back of him if he wanted to. Well, and, and listen, and he didn't do it. Yeah, why? I yeah. mean, you know what I mean? Even Chase said, hey, did I do something wrong I, I over think, the radio? He wasn't real sure what happened either. I want to give credit, uh, credit to Chase there for having that self-control. So Logano still out front of the champ four, but it's Blaney, his teammate, leading the race.
Logano on a mission for his second championship and he has been out front of the other three championship four contenders every green flag lap except one today. So that is the dominant performance that Logano has put on and where they run now third sixth seventh and Chase Elliott back there in 30th after his wreck he is two laps down. So Junior I think we're getting to that point where pit, pit crews are getting ready to start getting up on the wall. Crew Chiefs are going to have to make a decision. If you want to split this in half, this last stage in half, it's getting pretty close to doing that. And does somebody want to get on pit road early and take that chance? Where does Chastain and Bell, where do they feel like they are with Logano? Do they have to make something happier or try to pull some different strategy? Yes, yeah, so they, you know, we think a lot of teams will come to pit road anytime between now and lap 255. But if you're not fast, if you feel like that you really don't have a chance to go out there. 10 to 15. If you feel like you don't have the speed, you could stay out there and run along, hope for a yellow. That would be your sort of Hail Mary to try to trap everybody down, get a lot of track position. Marty. That was Ross Chastain's radio, Phil Surgeon, giving him the information about 10 to 15 laps before they'll come to pit road. And I think here's the dilemma, Jeff. We talked about how they could come to pit road, get those Goodyear tires on a little bit sooner, but they're much better on the longer run. So that's their strength. They want to play to that strength. That is a tough dilemma. Just, you know, how far behind are you? So right now, you know, they're two and three quarters of a second behind Logano. How are you going? Are you that much faster than Joey Logano? Are you going to be able to run him down, you know, from that far back? I don't think so. Even if you're good on a long run, you'd have to be great on a long run to run the 22 down from that far back. I think if you're Christopher Bell, maybe you come early. Go ahead and try to leapfrog those guys. Get on pit road. Get the speed and pace in your car with the new tires. Force them to come to pit road. They're racing each other. They're, these playoff guys are only watching what the other playoff guys are doing. The last two championships were won on the last pit stop. And so far today, the one of Ross Chastain, his pit crew has been the best between the three that are on the lead lap right now. Christopher Bell's ran that car of Ross Chastain down as you see Joe Logano trying to hold off the four, but further back, the one in sixth place and Christopher Bell. Christopher's got a little pace here. Picking up, picking up pace here. Worried about his car blowing up. They made some changes. Maybe, maybe figured out what that issue was. But well, here they all are. There's Joey Logano in the 22 car, running third, the highest running guy in the championship. Whoever wins in the top four of the championship, that's going to be the champion when they leave here. And here's the guys trying to run him down. So they're all on the straight, same straightaway. They can all see each other. And we talk about the importance of pit crews. We talk about all of those things. It also falls on the driver. Who can get on pit road well? Who can get in his box well? Who can get off pit road well? There they are. They're not that far behind. Last, uh, last lap on the racetrack, Chastain and Bell, second fastest and fourth fastest lap on the racetrack. Joe Logano, about two, two tenths slower. These guys are running him down, but here comes Christopher Bell on the pit road. He's made the decision to come to you, Dylan. So they have that motor scare. That issue has sorted itself out. Christopher Bell's only report now is that he needs some front turn. They're back to how they were earlier in the race. Really good on the long run here. Four tires and fuel for Bell. Doesn't look like any chassis adjustment. Maybe just a little bit of air pressure to help Christopher here for the next 62 laps. And now we'll see if this pulls the other championship four contenders to pit road. This is a gutsy call, but I love it because he's the first one on. He'll look at the one that brings the one that makes the one come to pit road. So now Ross Chastain also on pit road. You see him with William Byron right on his back bumper. And he's got a long way to go to get to you, Marty. So how, Rick, does Ross Chastain make up two seconds? That's how far he was behind Joey Logano. His pit crew, as we mentioned earlier today, the number one ranked crew on pit road. They have gained them four spots here this afternoon. Oh, and some trouble on the right rear. That's going to cost them a ton of time on a critical stop for Ross Chastain. What could be the last stop of the day? He is going to lose some spots here, Dave. Ryan Blaney win the race today, his first of the season. They're going to make a change to the 12 car. He had a little trouble rolling through the center of turns three and four. He'll get four Goodyear tires at Sunoco Fuel, Parker. And for Joey Logano, he was supposed to go about eight laps further, but they had to react to Christopher Bell in the 20 car and the one of Ross Chastain. They pulled them down a lap after the one of Ross Chastain and asked him to what adjustments he needs just being a little tighter on exit for the 22 car. This team has been absolutely flawless on pit road throughout this race, putting those four Goodyear tires on, and they're away. We'll see how they rejoin. 
All right, here we go. Let's see how that's netted out. Joey Logano coming off pit road. There's Christopher Bell in the back of the screen. Christopher Bell has gained some time on Joey Logano by getting to old pit road sooner. Look at the gain they made. But now the problem, Joey Logano's got a little bit fresher tire, but a big gain by the 20 and a huge loss by the one of Ross Chastain with that slow stop on the right rear. You see that at the top right of your screen where that one car is compared to the 20 and the 22. Bell was two and a half seconds back from Logano when they started the pit cycle and now Bell has closed the gap very close to Logano as everyone continues to cycle through on these pit stops. Bowman has just come to pit road as well as Corey LaJoy. They were out front, but that will put Blaney back up top. Obviously, Christopher Bell would love to pass this 22 right now. If anything, just keep it close. Stay right there with him. You know you have more pace on the long run. 58 laps to go. Just keep this guy right off the nose, and you can beat him late in this race. Drives at the top of the racetrack here, really pushing hard up into that resin that's still there from the previous races. Look at the gain down the back straightaway, running that high line. I love that. Bell. On the outside. Yeah, looking for the championship here. Christopher Bell knows what's on the line, and we've seen it before. He won at the Roval when he had to. He won last week at Martinsville when he had to. Now for the championship right in front of him, it's Joey Logano, a car length away. Bell trying to wrap that yellow line with the left side tires. Legato trying to get a great run on this. And oh, Bell's doing a great job in th one and two. Let's see what he can do in three and four. These guys, every single race, come out of nowhere in the final stage. Lap car right here. Oh, very tight for Christopher. Yeah, big wobble there by the 51 of Cody Ware and Christopher safely by him. Christopher Bell got really tight over there. Had a problem. Now, these drivers. Fighting with the lap traffic. That's LaJoy in front of him. He's a lap down, running 27th. He's going to run in the middle of the racetrack. Joey goes to the bottom here. Joey's sliding up the racetrack. Can't really finish the throttle on corner exit. Christopher Bell's going to close in a little bit down the front straightaway. Every season they have had playoffs where the top four have to finish in front of the other. It has taken a win to win the championship. It might not happen this year. Blaney has a very strong car. Briscoe running second, Harvick is third, but Legato running in that fourth position just in front of Bell for the title. Oh, Christopher has to really cut off the seven there. Couldn't really finish the corner the way he wanted to. Man, it's so tough watching these guys try to race each other and the lap traffic. And it is not working well for Christopher. As you can see the gap wide between him and Legato. It's all about where you catch these cars and, and how you catch them, mainly on corner exit. You want to open up the wheel, mash the gas. You can't with your car on your outside. The other cars don't want to affect the championship race, but at the same time, they want to have a great finish. They don't want to give up and give up a spot. So they're trying to run as hard as they can. And Christopher is struggling right here, losing a lot of time. The seventh car, which he just lapped, is now back to his inside. Could there be a problem for Christopher Bell? Blaney, Briscoe, and Harvick, one, two, three, but it's Logano still out front of the championship four.
Chase Elliott just coming off of pit road now three laps down to the field a disappointing ending to the 2022 season potentially for Chase Elliott after the wreck and going a couple laps down working on that car but it's Logano who has looked the strongest he led 156 laps but as far as the championship four competition goes he has only been behind one other championship four competitor for one lap of he, this race he put a little distance between him and Christopher Bell right there but the last few laps on the racetrack Christopher's regrouped been able to match lap time Christopher though is feeling a little pressure here from Byron in the 24 when he looks in the mirror every straightaway but he is now matching the lap time on Logano we remember the last run he was the quickest car at the end of that run 45 laps to go still plenty of time Dylan and all Adam, uh, Adam Stevens always the cheerleader 48 of Alex Bowman around he hit the front very hard remember Alex Bowman back from a concussion and not the way he wanted the last race of the season to go he's running top 15 a lot of damage in the front of that car Flat tire jack put right sides on it right sides are flat but it's destroyed buddy he was running 15 here at his home racetrack from Tucson Arizona Alex Bowman again driving for that 48 team Greg Ives final race All that on the pit box tire coming apart it's going to put a lot of debris down so that's going to add a lap or a couple laps to the cleanup on this caution let's take a look see how this happened for Alex off of turn two on the inside of the 38 of Gillen and wow Oh my Coming up the racetrack, Michael McDowell right into the door. I think Michael didn't realize that there was a car on the outside of Alex, expecting Alex to come up off the corner a little bit wider on corner exit. Real hard contact there. Luckily not, it didn't look like a really hard direct impact to the inside wall, kind of a glancing blow for Alex. Wow, look at this. Yeah, I, one thing I can figure is McDowell thought that Bowman was going to move up the racetrack to the side of Todd Gillen. And McDowell just completely misjudged it and just cleans Alex Bowman out. Yeah, wow. that was a hard, hard, hard contact between two cars. You typically don't see cars slamming into each other like that. Yeah, 34. Just another thing that move. another thing that we see too is a glare. This is the time of day where the glare is dropping down the front, down the uh, back straightaway, and it's very difficult for drivers to see what's going on coming off of two. Guys, can the pit crews make up for mistakes that they may have made on the last time because with 43 laps to go still in this race they've all got to come to pit road for fresh tires well Christopher Bell and his team during that green flag stop they had their best stop of the day so right then you saw he did a great job on pit road they got in a lap earlier and they had a great pit stop they need it now in the worst way Ross Chastain and his team they just made a mistake right they got to clean that up and fix it they are not out of this they're good at getting him anywhere from three to five stops on some of these pit stops it's exactly what he's going to need right now the other two just don't want any mistakes and how important is that number one pit stall for Joey Logano that has won the race a year ago for Kyle Larson let's see if the pit crew can rise to the occasion and take advantage of that number one stall Marty Rick Pitt Road ex uh, expected to open next time by, and I think we cannot emphasize enough, NASCAR is a team sport. Ross Chastain's pit crew, the perfect example. We've talked about how they've been the number one crew on pit road, and what was the money stop they thought last time they did not have a good stop, could not get the uh, the wheel nut off on the right rear, and you see the time they lost. They lost four seconds to Joey Logano, potential redemption for Ross Chastain's pit crew if everybody comes down pit road. But, Jeff, that shows the pressure is on these pit crews to make it happen. Well, in the last 25 stops this team has pulled off, that was the second worst. So it was one of their worst recently. The other question I've got, would you do two tires? Would you just do fuel? They haven't run that many laps on this set of tires. Is somebody willing to try something other than just four? Yeah, Jeff, again, only 18 laps on this set of tires. Let's see what they've got. Dylan. 20 team has worked all year to put together the best over the wall crew they can, and they need one more good stop here for the 20 team. Adam Stevens used a code word. We'll see what they do here. Right side's on for the 20 car, Marty. The three players left in the championship four all coming down pit road right now. Ross Chastain's team 
trying to have a good stop. He said, I just could not get going on that last run. I lost that early right rear grip I had before, and the car just does not cut good enough. We'll see if the crew delivers, Parker. For Joey Logano, he came on the radio and said, tight, 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 could not turn there. As you see them go around the right side, this team has been absolutely perfect on pit road through this race. It looks like they'll be ahead of the championship four. Briscoe with a great stop. He comes off of pit road in front of Blaney. Logano able to stay in front of the other championship four contenders and a devastating stop for the 20 of Christopher Bell. Caution's out. Cars have made their way here onto pit road. A tough stop, though, for the 20 car of Christopher Bell, losing many positions there coming off pit road. Oh, looks like there's an issue now with the six car of Brad Kislowski. Looks like there's some fire there under the right front, front right tire, it looks like now. They're bringing it down pit road. I'll keep you updated here on uh, what's going on. Definitely some fire under the hood there. He's going to get out of the car as quickly as possible. An issue we've seen before with this car, and now it's Brad Keselowski who has the buildup of rubber underneath the hood and the front end of this car, and it catches on fire to the point where he has to climb out of the car. We've seen this before, and luckily Brad's able to get out. Seems like this happened to a lot of Fords this year. The four car of Harvick at Darlington. It happened to his teammate in Indianapolis. NASCAR felt like that they had this issue fixed. There is a ton of rubber buildup and debris at this racetrack. We can see it falling off the cars going down the back straightaway at speed. And enough rubber has built up to get in and around that exhaust, catch on fire, and then set the rest of the car on fire under caution for Brad. Fortunate for him to be able to get out. Yeah, NASCAR made a lot of changes over the last several months trying to prevent that. And we saw some fires again last week in Martinsville in a similar situation where just tons of rubber coming off of those tires. And now again today a fire, something that has to get fixed before next year. Unfortunate first year for Brad Keselowski being a driver owner with Roush Fenway Keselowski, RFK Racing. We had 18 cars on the lead lap. A lot of guys are going to get wave arounds here and that's going to make the car, you know, put about, you know, handful more cars three or four more cars on the lead lap. That extends to about 21 now. And that might be important, you know, for Christopher Bell or somebody, if they get a late yellow trying to come down, you know, their only hope is to put on tires late or something like that. Maybe take two, whatever. More cars on the lead lap makes those choices more difficult. 
the 19 of Bartrex Jr. was speeding, so that's going to give a position to Chastain. Yeah, I mean, that certainly helps Ch Chastain closing to Logano. Look at these pit times. Logano's team stepped up to the plate at the right time. The best pit stop of the three. Bell, a disastrous stop, a problem on the left rear. Left rear, let's listen to the 20 radio. Caleb's finger got stuck in between the nut and the spindle, ripping the hide off of it. It took a second to get the nut off to get his hand free so they could put the nut back on. Got it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and you see the ice on the, the uh, crew member's hand. The right side goes up. Tires come off a little slow on the right front, but nothing terrible. Then watch the left rear. he's okay. I mean, it's so dangerous. You know, we talk about pit crew members on pit road with cars coming down there, but the act itself is very dangerous. There's things going, you know, the RPMs on those guns are just absolutely flying. Everybody's trying to do it as quickly as they can. They are unbelievable athletes, and it, it is, I have so much respect for them. All right, let's get a few updates. Now under 36 to go in this championship, Dylan. And Rick, I just keep going back to what Christopher Bell said earlier this week. It's not over till it's over. We've seen it too many times in this playoffs just with our car that uh, it's not completely done until this race is over. So they've got a lot of work to do from 15th on this restart. But anything and crazier things have happened in these playoffs before Marty. So we'll see what happens with 36 to go. Dylan, how about Ross Chastain's pit crew rebounding after they had the tough stop under green a little while ago. Under caution here, they gain him yet another spot. But here's the key. Brandon McReynolds, his spot reminded him remember how we made our living here in the spring it was on pit road and restarts i would expect uh ross chastain to be very aggressive and that's an understatement he will start seven and Parker. for joe logano he's led 157 laps when he won that championship in 2018 he took hold of that race late in 2020 he said that was the race and championship that got away if he wins this one he may be able to thank that pit crew who have been absolutely perfect today all right Jeff, we're getting ready to come to the choose, and we're hearing that NASCAR is adding a lap before they have to make that choice, either inside or outside. Now, do you choose inside versus outside on this racetrack and with these cars? Well, NASCAR came up several years ago with the idea of letting the drivers choose which lane they want to go in. So they actually cross this box, and you before you get that to that box, the orange box you're getting ready to see, you have to choose the left or the right. Joey Logano has got a decision to make, where he wants to go. And that's just where I think my car is the fastest. The one that with the difficult decision is Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain is just thinking about what do I have to do to get to the 22 car? So he's going to watch, see what Logano picks, and then pay attention. What does Harvick pick? What does Byron pick? What does Kyle Busch pick? I want the shortest line. I want the fewest cars between myself and Joey Logano, that's all I care about right now. Now, Junior, he could make a decision to pick a line that's further away than, than Logano because he thinks his car may drive better and he can pick up more spots. But I think this late in the race, you just got to get as close to Logano as possible. What's out there? What is in the toolbox for Ross Chastain? Because we saw at Martinsville what he did just to get to the championship four. What can he do now to get Logano and potentially pass him? I think that the choice for Lega for um Chastain is to take the inside line, try to have a great acceleration on the guy in front of you. And as you fan and can turn left past the start finish line, you cannot you cannot change lanes before you get to the start finish line. So he wants to time that perfectly so that as he gets to the start finish line, he can dive to the inside and charge turn one and try to take as many positions as possible. So Logano, he goes to the bottom. Ross Chastain goes to the bottom. Now only one car in between them. Ross wants to time it perfectly so that he is side by side with that 22 at some point down here in one and two. And he's going to try to get a little physical. I would assume both drivers are aggressive. Yeah, he will risk it all. This is all or nothing right here. 33 laps to go. Yeah, Brandon Lines, the spotter on the 24 car for William Byron. He might want to tell him <laughs> that Ross Chastain is going to be coming with some steam. Ross Chastain is going to get super aggressive here. 
with 33 to go. There's a championship. This guy has fought and clawed his way for this opportunity. He's going to do whatever it takes. And look at that view. Yeah, the sun. The drivers, the sun setting at the most inopportune time. Blinding these guys. They got pitted, the dirty, terrible windshields to look through, and that makes it so much more difficult, especially coming off of turn two. Here we go. 33 laps remain in the championship. Briscoe on the inside, Blaney on the outside, and Legato just a row back on that inside line. They all dive down low. William Byron underneath Joey Legato. Oh, Joey got tight right there in the middle of the corner. Briscoe still out front. What a run by the 22 of Legato off of turn two. Man, he really separated himself from the one of Chastain right there. Chastain not able to get the run on the 24 he wanted. Now he's charging hard up the racetrack with Harvick down the front straightaway. He's got to, got to clear Harvick quickly. Watch what he does right here. He's going to drive in the corner really deep, trying to slide up in front of Harvick. Logano, though, taking second away from Blaney now. Oh, the 14 had an issue off of turn two. Still side by side down the back straightaway, the 12 to the inside of the 22. Look at Chastain to the top. He's trying the to top, trying to get around the 24. A good run off the of turn two, turn four. Turns to the inside. Side by side, he's going to be clear. Logano up to second. Now he's trying to run down that 14 of Briscoe. To the inside he goes. Chase Briscoe is going to be a difficult pass right here. Chase Briscoe is trying to win this race. How about There's Chastain? about this championship. Chastain, Chastain back to the top of the racetrack here. He's going to try to get a run on the 12 off of turn four. Blaney has a good exit. Not able to do nothing here for Chastain. Chastain again across the apron, risking it all down there. Final 30 laps. Oh, he's going to get into the back 12 right there. He got tight. That's going to cost him a little bit of time. Logano underneath Briscoe. Logano can clear Briscoe. That's a huge advantage. Clean air. Clean air is king. Logano going for the lead. Briscoe on the outside. Logano dives down low. We'll see if he can make the pass before they get to turn one. Byron's got it underneath Ross Chastain behind them. Yeah, that issue in one and two behind the 12, the lap before cost him all kinds of momentum. He's trying to clear Byron. There he does it off a of turn two. Logano is out front once again, and he'll start to add to that 158 laps led in this race. Trust Chastain me. could see him, though. The Brisco championship's right in front of him. Briscoe wants to win this race. He is not rolling over for Logano. The car is just not handling well. He's got a battle now with Blaney for second. And Blaney's hungry as well. He wants a win. He knows that if he wins the race and Logano finishes right behind him, that Logano wins the championship. Yeah, Chastain's car is just not doing what he needs it to do right now. Logano driving away, and this is what we've seen all day. When Logano gets clean air on a short run, he is going to be very difficult to beat. Chastain's going to have to have some help with the caution. Chastain falling back. He's one and a half seconds behind Logano. These guys right here continue to battle, crossing each other over. Down in one and two, Blaney's like, I had enough of this, man. He's going to try to crowd him on the entry. He drifts up the racetrack. These cars side by side is only hurting Ross Chastain because that's that much air that Ross Chastain cannot get to the front of his car. And Ross just doesn't have the car to do it. We've seen him in that position before. Yeah, we have. We have. He might get a late yellow here and get lucky for another opportunity, but the car's just not got enough pace to be able to drive up there and challenge the 22. He's been the best on restarts all season long, but now he's going to need another one if he wants a shot at this title. Logano out front by 1.2 seconds over Blaney, under 25 laps remaining. He has been great on restarts all year long, but that, fi that final start right there, the one we just had, he wasn't able to get to the inside of the 24, get the run time just right, had to follow the 24 into the corner, and it really created some distance between him and Joey. Now he's battling still, trying to keep this position. So now Chastain, with 24 to go, understands he's got to find some speed. So he's going to have to start looking around something different. What can I do different to make my car get rolling? 
This 14 car now is an obstacle in front of him that he needs to try to figure out a way to get around. And that won't be an easy one. 14 car won here earlier this year. These two guys actually finished first and second yep. in the March race together. Chastain, when we talked to him earlier this week, so humble. We had talked about how big that move was that he made to make his way into the championship four. And he said, guys, you have to remember, though, I used to drive a motor coach just to get to the track. I was driving for somebody, and I was running 25th, 28th. Now I have a chance at a championship. That's what's in front of me. That's what I was thinking about when I went up against the wall. He and his crew chief, he and his spotter both, and the Vic Reynolds were driving motor coaches, and now here they are contending for a championship. That's how hungry they are. And now just 22 laps remain. And this has to be a sick feeling for Chastain. Christopher Bell's worked his way up in the 10th position from the pit road issue. Both these guys are praying for a caution. They need a yellow to reset things, to try to challenge the 22 with a different strategy on pit road or what have you. Chastain now under pressure from the 24. Byron looked to the inside there for a moment. Marty. You can tell Ross Chastain kind of losing right rear grip, especially on corner exit right there as William Byron tries to get to him. But they have reminded him that right in front of him, Chase Briscoe has talked about how bad his car has gotten on this run as well. So Chastain still in attack mode, and you see it right there, Rick. Yeah, he got to the back bumper of Chase Briscoe. We'll see if he can make anything of this 14-1 battle. The laps continue to wind down, though, making this so difficult. Back up front, Blaney has run down Logano two tenths faster the lap before and two tenths quicker this lap as well as the one drives to the inside here. Chastain's got to make something happen here. He's sliding way up the racetrack, trying to move Briscoe out of the lane, and he did it. Chastain taking the spot away, so he's up to third. Blaney, as you mentioned, closing the gap. He's just four tenths of a second behind Logano. But look how far you have to look to find the top two. Chastain, two and a half seconds behind Logano. Yeah, Chastain just had to get ugly with Briscoe there and just take that spot away. And now, can he have, does he have enough pace? A long way to make up, Parker. Joe Logano may have 2.6 seconds over Ross Chastain, but his spotter Colin Presley let him know that Ross got clear of the 14 car and then said just, just Blaney and about a half a straightaway back to Ross between us as they keep him updated on who he's racing for this championship. 12 of Blaney much, much quicker than this 22. And I honestly feel like there'll be a point here late in these final few laps where he will feel comfortable challenging and passing his teammate for the win of the race. Once he feels like there's enough space between them and Chastain that he won't be putting Logano in a terrible situation, he goes for the win. Logano's going to be hungry, though. He Log does not like to be passed. <laughs> He'll be fine if he can win this championship, but I just have to imagine Blaney would love to end this season strong considering how good they've been all year and, and they've just not been able to finish races. You two are still about a fifth better than the one, 22 back to him. The more he hears that, the more encouraged he is. Okay, I gotta get, I go to get Logano with four or five to go if I can pass him. I just gotta go do it. Two and a half seconds out to Chastain right now and 15 laps to go. Think about Hudson who's watching this race, Logano's son. He's four years old. He's going to be old enough to understand what dad is doing here. As a matter of fact, in Countdown to Green, Logano said he told him he was going to win the pole. He went out and won the pole. Then he told him, I'm going to win the race. He said, I can't have my son think I'm a liar, so i got to go out there and win the race, and that's what he's trying to do now. Uh, pressure of bringing that championship trophy home with your kids is great pressure. That's what you want to do. But as this battle is raged on, that last lap, Ross Chastain was about two tenths a second faster. Let's see what he does this lap. I just feel like his car is not doing what he needs it to do. He's going to have to get a break. 
Yep, he was the fastest. Ross Chastain was the fastest. He ran a 28 flat. Logano a 28.36, so almost four tenths a second faster. That is a ton. That gap still right around two seconds, a little over two seconds separating Logano and Chastain for the championship. I think this 12 is plenty quick to be able to go up there and drive by his teammate. And I think he wants to do it. I just wonder what kind of information they're getting. I wonder what Logano's getting in information to the to the one car. Is he learning that that car is much faster than him, Marty? The battle for the lead rages on. Ross Chastain, 2.28 seconds behind. Junior, I just want to throw this out there. We saw him do it last week. Would we see another Hell Mary or a Hell Melon from Ross Chastain? You got to know they want to try it at some point or at least think about it. Would he do it today? Well, I think if he's not within striking distance, if he can't actually physically get out there and, and, and move the 22, but he is maybe five, six car lengths back, it's going to cross his mind. It crossed the mind of Noah Gragson last night in the Xfinity race but he didn't, didn't think it was possible. At this racetrack, the wall down the back straightaway sort of turns out away from, away from traffic. You see it right there, it bends away. And, and how do you follow that? How do you, how do you make it happen here? Be able, see it disappears behind the fence. It'd be way difficult to make that work here at this racetrack. It's worth a try. If it's all that's there, absolutely you have to be thinking about doing that. We'd never be talking about this if it hadn't happened last week. We yeah. wouldn't even consider it. I, I just don't know that with that curve and that wall, when you look at that shot down the back straightaway and you see how much it goes to the right, look at that. So the reason it worked at Martinsville is because he was able to put his right side of the car right on the wall, entering the corner, and never had to, never had to turn the wheel. And so he, when he drove in there, Watch the whole right side of the car. It's all the way against the car wall, all the way around the corner. To do it here, you'd have to drive in and you're gonna hit the right front. And if you hit the right front and it digs in, then it's not gonna carry the momentum and it's gonna damage the car. So I think a much bigger challenge here. And even Ross told us he doesn't know now after doing it, if he'd ever do it again, what he went through. Almost lost his vision, he said, in that process. The last several laps though, he's got the faster car. He's a tenth quicker. He's now inside of two seconds, 1.8. Eight laps to go, that's not enough laps, but he is the quicker car, Parker. And Dale, the answer to your question from a couple laps ago, is about two laps ago, they switched to giving Joe Logano the lap times of Ross behind him and telling him that gap has just now gone under two seconds, updating Joey to what's happened there. They've stopped giving him any updates about what Blaney's doing behind him. The, the one thing that's going to be difficult for Ross, he's quicker, right, running him down, but that sidekick. That Blaney sidekick that's been there all race long for Logano. Blaney's not going to lay over for this one car. He's going to he's going to put him in a difficult situation to try to just make the pass on second place. Should he even get there? Oh, if he got there, it would be a, he'd be a sidekick because he get kicked out of the way <laughs> as soon as he got there. I mean, it just Ross Chastain could not have time to mess around with him. He would be forced to move him out of the way. Think about what's in front of Joey Logano here as he climbs to five laps to go. We're coming up on five to go in this championship, but the last two-time Ford champion was David Pearson back in 1968 and 69. That's the last time Ford has had a two-time champion. Five to go, no pressure. You need to hit your marks here. 42, Ross was out of 40. There you have it. Even lap times for the most part in the last couple of laps as 22 cars smash the button. Back to one, well, it's 1 1.6. If you're waiting for Joey Logano to make a mistake, you can forget it. I mean, that guy is just so steady. One of the strengths that he has is he knows these moments. He's been in these moments, and he knows how to execute it. So Joey Logano is going to drive a very smooth and smart next four laps. Time's on the left, lower left of the screen. Uh, right when they cross the stripe, those update immediately, and Logano running a little faster than Bell, a little slower than Chastain, but not enough as they come up on three laps to go in the season and the championship. Logano has pulled away from Blaney, six tenths of a second now, and Chastain 1.5 seconds back. And Logano is just hoping there's no caution, does not want a caution, no mechanical issues, no lap traffic, no wrecks, just he wants a perfectly clean three laps. What a day.
What a season it has been for Joey Logano. He has been dominant all day long. Out front for 184 two laps. Two to go, two to go. And between his championship four competitors, he's never faltered. Only one lap, one green flag lap, was he not in front of the other four or three championship four contenders. Logano has put together a perfect race, and once again, it could come down to the champion winning the race to win the championship. This time by, one lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. His closest competitor for the race win is Ryan Blaney, a teammate. That teammate has been hungry all year long, but it looks like he's going to have to stay hungry going to 2023 because Logano has been the class of the field all day long. The 32-year-old, Joey Logano, he's already built a Hall of Fame career. Today, he etches his name in stone as one of the few to capture multiple championships. Logano is a two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes! Great drive. Way to hang in there. Proud of you. Great job, guys. Great job down there, everybody. That was Roger Penske we just heard. Team owner. A big, big season for Roger Penske. This is the first time he has ever won the IndyCar Championship and the Cup Series Championship in the same season. Strapping to get out of the car. Joey Legata, you can see the excitement. How badly he wants to climb out of this car to celebrate. Logano, two championships, another race win here in the season finale. Paul Wolf, his crew chief, that has his second championship. The sold-out crowd here at Phoenix appreciating a championship performance today out of Joey Logano. Rutledge. Here he is. He told the kids before he left he was going to come home with the second championship. Joey Logano, congratulations. You have done it. We did it. We're, We're champions, champions again. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Thank you to everybody. My team, you guys are amazing. Gave me a, a good race car, good pit stop there at the end. Get us up in front. And uh, boy, that was just intense there at the end. So. It's all about championships. That's what it's all about. And we worked so hard the last couple of weeks trying to put ourselves in position. And everything that happened in 2020, I knew that we just wanted to have a solid run and do this today. And I can't thank Ford and Shell Pencil enough uh, for supporting me over the last 10 years, getting us a couple championships together. All our partners at Team Penske, everybody that works on these cars, it's such a big deal to win these championships. It impacts so many people's lives. And uh, um, 
obviously uh, in the news this morning um, with, with Koi too. I, I, uh, I don't know what to think, um, but uh, obviously my condolences go to the Gibbs family, but just an incredible day for, for us and um, kind of mixed emotions at the moment. The family's here with you. You guys got the pole. It was a perfect race all day. Did you ever have any doubts, Joey, of being able to get back here and get that second championship? I don't know what you said, right? I don't really care either. What'd you say, though? <laughs> a perfect day for you guys, the poll, everything else, the team top to bottom. Was, was there ever any doubt for you? Uh, no, no. I knew going into this thing that we were going to win the championship. I told the guys we were the favorite from Daytona, and uh, we truly believed it, and that's the difference. And, man, it's like I said, I had a good team with a bunch of confidence, and we had all the reason in the world to be confident. I said I'd never been truly this ready for a championship race, and... Uh, we did it, man. I can't believe it. Family has defined your career from those summers you spent with your dad in the camper, traveling on over. Your family here, what does it mean to you to have them here with you? Oh, man, it's so special. And J-Mo and Amelia are at home. Uh, but uh, hey, guys, <laughs> dad will be home soon. But uh, we might party a little bit first. It might be a little rough shape when we get home. But this is, uh, man, this is what it's all about, though. I mean, it, when you're a kid, his age, my dream was to, to win cup championships, and here we are with two of them. Oh, uh, man, it just means so much. It's so special. I just want to celebrate, Rut. Congratulations. Joey Logano is a two-time champion here at Phoenix Raceway. Wife Brittany right there with him. Young Hudson, just four years old. The last time he won a championship, Hudson was barely one. And so he mentioned it would be great if he can experience that with me and understand what dad has accomplished. And so now he's going to be on his hip as he celebrates this one, the second Cup Series championship for Joey Logano. A absolutely dominant performance by the driver of the 22 today. Joey Logano wins the race and the championship. Team Penske dominant in this race as well with Ryan Blaney finishing in that second spot. But all the accolades go to Joey Logano capturing the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. The NASCAR America Post Race Show presented by Progressive getting underway here from Phoenix Raceway. Joey Logano winning the title and celebrating there with Young Hudson as they have the checkered flag. 
Finishing second in the point standings will be Ross Chastain with a third place finish in this race. I'm sure that's not what he was hoping for as far as this storybook ending to what a season it has already been. He's standing by with Parker. Right, Rick, it was just over 1.2 seconds behind Joe Legato there. So, Ross, I have to ask, is there anything differently you could have done on that last run to try and catch that 22 car? Uh, Parker, I think we did everything right there at the end. That was that was a heck of a drive for us. Um, who had the one car at second in points on their bingo card uh, February 1st? I, I, it's it's pretty wild. But um, look, this is a this is a continuation of of a lot of people believing in me, man. Um, I came in the truck series in 2011 with Stacy Compton, Bobby Dodder, Brad, um, on up through Xfinity, Johnny Davis and got the chance with Jay Robinson, got the chance with Chip Ganassi, and to build everything together to come and drive this one car, the 42 car last year. There's so many team owners, so many crew members that have put in work. Some of them were just like internships. They were working on the four car, and it's pretty wild to, uh, to think we just fought for a Cup Series championship, had a car fast enough to chase them down at the end, and that's a testament to everybody at Chevy and GM um, making me a better race car driver with Josh and Scott and Dan. Um, I wouldn't want to be doing this with anybody else. And man, my family, I got to tell you, they're, they've stuck with me and, and pushed me forward from the farm to, to NASCAR. And it's wild why we're here. I don't understand. But uh, mom and dad and Chad, I'm so proud of what we've been able to do at the track and at the farm. And, for all the watermelons across the country, it's uh, it's absolutely incredible. So I want to take this moment and thank a lot of people. It's uh, a lot of people maybe thought I was not sure what I was gonna be when I got out of the car, but I'm so proud of the effort, so proud of um, execution on pit road with our pit crew. And uh, this is only our first shot with track house. And for Justin Marks and Ty and Pitbull to believe in me to drive this one car, it's incredible. Quickly, did you think the hill mill may work down there in three and four as you're patch catching the 22? I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't think it would. I just think we're going too fast here, and um, I just didn't didn't think it would work. So uh, I thought it would at Martinsville, and feel like I'm very blessed and fortunate that it did, but not here. The incident with the nine car there on that restart. What happened from your point of view? I had a really good run. Uh, looked like William didn't get going quite as well as he wanted to, and uh, got to the left. Got to the left of him, and um, saw an erratic move that he made to to turn left to cover it, and I was already there. So. Um, yeah, look, it's it's not how I want to want to raise him or those guys. And for everybody at GM, I needed other Chevys up there to uh, to fight fight those other guys. And so, um, you know, it's it's not what I want to do. But uh, I feel like I had position on him, and he tried to cover it late. So um, hats off to Mr. Penske and Rod Roger and everybody on Joey's team. Um, I know a couple of those guys and have worked with them in the past. So it's uh, I am happy for them, and I am genuinely happy right now. Um, just wish we had you know another go at it. Successful year for Ross Chastain and Team Trackhouse. Dave? Chase Elliott has broken things down with his team and uh, talking through Jeff Gordon's viewpoint on what happened there. You've looked at the replay a couple of times. Uh, Ross was asked about it. He said you made sort of an erratic move and, and tried to cover him when he was there. How did you see it? Um, just uh, want to say congratulations to Joey and, and his team. They did a they did a really good job this entire weekend, and um, he's a very deserving champion and, and, frankly, just happy for them. Proud of my team for the effort that they put in this weekend. Felt like we had um, got our car a lot better throughout the race, and, um, you know, for that, I think we should be we should be very proud. You know, it was nice to make the round. Uh, that's a very difficult thing to do. Obviously not content with that, but certainly uh, nice to come out here and have a shot, and hopefully we can come back stronger next year and, and give ourselves another chance and um, make uh, you know make it make it go our way next time how would you assess the season chase because certainly there were high points with the wins there were comebacks and, and they were really overcoming throughout this playoff uh, yeah I mean I, I and I mentioned this a lot over the last few weeks but you know each of the last three seasons I feel like we have made the round of four in very different ways and, and I think for that we should be very proud of um, you know the 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 playoff points that we accumulated this year in that regular season championship really is what got us here. Um, kind of a rough, rough nine weeks um, up until today. I actually thought today was going, going pretty good. At, we had just had our best pit stop of the day, and uh, we just got our car driving uh, pretty decent too. So um, that's, that's the way it goes. But nonetheless, I uh, appreciate my team. They, they've worked extremely hard, and we have put a lot of effort in and trying to be better. And and I felt like we uh, 
I felt like we were heading in the right direction today. So proud of that. Looking forward to uh, looking forward to not worrying about racing for a little while. Frankly, looking forward to some time off and uh, and do, doing something else for uh, for a couple months. Not Chase's day today, but there will be championships to come, I'm sure, Dylan. And Dave, for Christopher Bell, it's going to be a third-place finish in the points today. But ultimately, I know that's not what's on the minds of everybody on this team. But what is your emotions after your day today and, and everything that this entire group has gone through? Yeah, I mean, uh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Just, you know, from being out and then the, the wins at Charlotte and Martinsville and then all of a sudden you wake up this morning and you're you're racing for a championship. You're happy. You're belated, and then uh, you know your world comes crushing down. So you know whenever you get news like that, it definitely puts it in perspective that there's more more to this than outside of racing. So you know the whole Gibbs family is in all of our prayers and uh, thinking of them. You know ultimately today the best car won the championship. He was really strong. Uh, proud of our 20 group though. We fought hard and whenever it was at the end of the race, the last pit stop or we thought was going to be the last pit stop, we were right there battling for it. So uh, just proud to be in this position, proud to be at Joe Gibbs Racing, driving this number 20 car. Um, Dwight Camry was, you know, we were there. We were there, and hopefully we can come back again next year. Statistically, this was your best season of your NASCAR Cup Series career. So what positives can you take from everything you guys battled through this year and, and apply that to next year? Yeah, I mean, I feel good about where we're at for sure, and and I'm hoping I'm hopeful that my group stays the exact same from mechanics and engineers, and obviously Adam Stevens on top of the pit box because I feel like we got a good thing going, and uh, we feel like we're right on the brink of you know being there every week and, and being a title contender year in and year out. So uh, just really, really thankful to be here, and uh, very, very incredibly saddened by the news today, and uh, thinking of the Gibbs family. Tough day for the 20 team. Christopher Bell, 10th on the racetrack today and third in points. Yeah, Dylan, the tough news that he's talking about, 49-year-old Coy Gibbs passing away uh, this morning. Uh, the father of Ty Gibbs, who had just won the championship, the Xfinity Series championship yesterday. And so that news just coming to the entire team and Joe Gibbs organization this morning right before that race. So the emotions, like he mentioned, so high running for a championship and then so low to hear of the news of losing one of the co-owners and, and founders of this race team. Yeah, and the unfortunate part about that is, is he gets in this race car for a few brief hours and goes to work, right? And and that's out of mind for 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 a brief few hours, and then you get back out of the car and are faced with that reality again. And so, uh, this the emotions of the roller coaster emotions for everyone in that organization over the past 48 hours. I can't imagine what they must be thinking, but. Um, we're certainly, you know, praying for uh, Joe and the whole family, Ty, um, and this industry will support them immensely going forward. See Joey Logano, and again, the highs and lows of the sport. Joey Logano accomplished everything he was looking for today. Joey Logano wins the race, wins the championship, and it's about time for the hardware to be distributed now as far as, once again, we will see Joey Logano with the NASCAR Cup Series trophy that is on stage and will be handed out here momentarily. Hudson being able to take that ride with dad all the way to the championship stage. And as he climbs out, we saw Joey when he initially got out of the car, the emotions and so focused. And he's had two weeks to think about this because his win and Vegas was able to open up this opportunity for him to focus on this race, this race alone. Knew he was in the championship four. And his signature, he held the steering wheel out. We see that with his foundation. Standing on the side of the car, arms raised, and once again celebrating a championship. A lot of people to congratulate the 2022 champion before he heads up on stage.
And now for the championship celebration ceremonies, we go to Marty. Joey Logano is now a two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion. Mark Rushbrook from Ford up here. Joey gets to pick up this trophy for a second time and to do the honors. And as you mentioned, Rick, hand out the hardware. I want to introduce the president of NASCAR, Steve Phelps. All you, Steve. Thank you, Marty. What an incredible season. But before we get to Joey and crown an unbelievable champion for the second time, I want to do a shout out to the best fans in all of sports, and that's NASCAR fans. Whether you're here at Phoenix Raceway or tuning in around the world, I want to thank you for all you do for our great sport. And Joey, what a season. Brittany, here we are. Congratulations. Joey, you started off our season way back in early February at the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum with a win. Nine months later, here we are, Phoenix Raceway, with another win. But this time, it comes with the big trophy. Correct? It's all America. And you are a two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion. So, Joey, on behalf of everyone NASCAR, I want to present to you the Bill France Cup and crown you our 2022 NASCAR Cup Series champion. Good work with Joey Logano as Roger Pinsky and Kathy Pinsky have come up here, as well as Brittany and Hudson, his son. You talked about Joey the first time around. You didn't realize what a championship meant. What does it mean to you as a family to share this moment with Hudson, who got to ride into victory lane with you? Uh, we've had so many conversations over the last couple of weeks before bedtime. <laughs> it said, uh, first was Daddy was going to go get a pole, and he was going to meet me out here, and we were going to win the race. And I couldn't make, couldn't be a liar to my son, so uh, this worked out. I always, I, I, ever, ever since Harvick gave his son a ride uh, in the car, I always wanted him to do that with Hudson, and he's such a little car guy. So it's a, it was a special moment to ride together. But man, I can't say enough about this race team. Is uh, they just grind it out. They just grind it. They're so amazing. Paul Wolf. Oh man, everybody that uh, that. that put so much time and effort in the last few weeks and, and, and not just this 22 team this this goes so so much deeper uh, when you think of Roush Yates engines and the motor that's in this bad boy uh, I mean you think of everyone at Ford uh, all the employees at Shell and Pennzoil uh, everyone that supported me uh, you know it's been 10 years with Shell and uh, to get a couple championships and 31 wins uh, if we're keeping count uh, is special getting the, the bookends right the first and the last race means a lot as well it's just a, a really special year uh, for us with our third baby even so I'm just a 22 and 22 I told you so <laughs> there you go Joey Logano always had the confidence Rick and he delivered today here in Phoenix thanks Marty we're going to talk a lot more with Joey Logano and the championship team our coverage will go to Phoenix now on Peacock and NASCAR coverage always available on NBCSports.com. Coming up next on NBC, it's football night in America, followed by Sunday night football, Titans and Chiefs. For Ron Skinner, Dean Kaminsky, and our entire NBC Sports crew, we thank you for joining us for another amazing season of NASCAR. Congratulations, Joey Logano. And that is officially a wrap on the 2022 Cup Series season. And what a year it's been from the start of the season with the debut of the next gen stock car, a record breaking 19 different winners, slew of first time drivers in victory lane. Kyle Busch, the end of an era in the 18 with Joe Gibbs racing and now Joey Logano here at Phoenix winning his second NASCAR title. The 22, they're the champions in 2022. What a way to end the year. From everybody here at Phoenix Raceway and all of us back at Charlotte Control Room, thank you so much for hanging out with us all season long, race fans. I'm Jesse Punch. I'll see you next season.
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.